Hello again and welcome to the Kerry Hurling Championship, Senior Hurling Championship uh, preview and I suppose review. And it's coming now to a very exciting stage of the season because all the preliminary quarterfinals have been played, the group stages are finished and from now on it's knockout. So this weekend with four quarterfinals, four more teams will exit the championship to join uh, Tralee Parnells and Dr Croaks. So we should have some interesting discussion. We have some injury updates and we'll be getting from our panel their ideas on who is likely to win the quarterfinals. In my estimation, they are very open this year. Uh, it could go any way, but the experts on my left here will have an inside line uh, on what is going to happen. Well, that's the plan anyway. Um, now, looking at uh, our panel, I'll start the opposite direction. This time I'll start with young uh, Aidan Leahy. And Aidan, of course, uh, is involved with Abby Dorney. So he won't be allowed near that game at all at the weekend. <laughs> uh, but he's also playing currently with Abby Dorney, uh, albeit their intermediate side. And of course, last week, everybody was texting and WhatsApping after we going off here, wondering how he got on in that game. <laughs> well, the good news is he's alive. Uh, the <laughs> second point in the game was that uh, he started a corner forward with the two roaches inside with him. And uh, they led uh, for the first minute uh, after scoring a point. And they were beaten 119 to four points. <laughs> However... Uh, Aidan says that the inside line, his particular line, they got no ball. They never saw the ball, and if they did, it was the defenders who snapped it up. So that's Aidan's story, and he's sticking by it. Uh, of course, he's also a former manager of the Abbey Dorney under-21 team, um, and he refutes the claim that he refused to talk to the media. Next in line, we have James Judas McCarthy. Um, <laughs> James uh, is from Kilmoyley. He has eight championship uh, medals, as you know, at this stage, anybody who's been watching us. Uh, he still hasn't got an intermediate medal. And uh, he also is uh, presently coaching in the cool camp, so he does a bit of good work as well, as all the <laughs> other work he does <laughs> sometimes. Um, he's very opinionated. He's liable to say anything, uh, but he's a great knowledge of the game. He played for Kerry. Um, and got rid of a few managers in his day as well, I'd say. Um, I think he played under something like eight different managers. And um, then he was involved in a management team with uh, Kieran Carey back in 2016 and currently involved with the Carey under-20 uh, team. So a very knowledgeable uh, individual is James. Um, whether he will be today or not remains to be seen. And next is John O'Dowd. He's a freelance journalist uh, following Hurling, uh, despite the fact that he doesn't come from a strong uh, uh, Hurling stronghold in Tarbert. Uh, but he is also, just like Aidan, he's another guy who's still playing, not Hurling, football at the age. He doesn't mind me revealing his age because he's not female. 49 he is. And he played his third game recently. He's yet to win a game uh, and he's yet to score a point. Uh, just it's like not Aiden. like him. Uh, it's not like him. But at the same time, he has uh, been uh, commentating on our games and uh, he's good knowledge of uh, what's going to happen at the weekend and he will have his own opinion and his say and that as well. Behind the camera, by the way, we have uh, John C. O'Shea as usual. You can't see him unless he turns the camera inwards for a selfie, but he's not like that. <laughs> now, um, the other thing I'd like to say, of course, is that all the games this weekend, the four quarterfinals, are live exclusively on Clubber TV along with games in mid to prairie, south to prairie, north to prairie, and there are any many more to prairies, awfully. Um, and I think there's something like 18 games on over the weekend. So get that, get that pass, or you can buy into any one of the games. But this weekend, when it's knockout, cutthroat, it's time now to get involved. And uh, Clubber uh, will be available to you on your laptop or on your uh, device, any one of your devices, and uh, we'll be bringing you all the games here in Kerry. So now we're going to look back before we look forward because we had four preliminary games the weekend. Uh, both of them were on Friday night, and the first one was on in Tralee. Well, it started, the train was a minute before the one in Abbey Dorney. So I'm going with Causeway, uh, and they played uh, Dr. Croaks, and uh, they won that game. 
And now we look at the highlights of Causeway and Dr. Croaks. But at 8 o'clock, you can follow it on the Kerry GA Facebook page. Now, I guess, but for here at Austin Sack Park, it's all about Causeway. It's all about Dr. Croaks, who will advance to the last eight. This is Mark Heffernan now for Croaks. Heffernan lays it off towards Brian O'Connor. Brian, what can he do? Can he get a score? O'Connor is about 35, didn't get full contact on it, but not cleared. Shot, goal! Not cleared by Causeway. Mistake inside the full back line by Gary Carey. It dropped to the full forward. Colm O'Quee's assistance. Good work by the full back there. And back helping out is Willie Allen. Willie, the sweeper, back there at the moment. Here's O'Hare again. Beautiful hurler. O'Hare shoot from 50 metres. This could be a great score. It is a great score. Opportunist. Over to Keith Carmody. Will it, will it a wisp type wing forward is Keith Carmody. Can also play midfield. Joseph Diggins can't control. That's the power now of Michael Lennon in the challenge. But again, whipped up nicely by Dan Goggin. This will be an opportunistic beauty. That was a great score by Dan Goggin. And if anything can get... Here's Goggin. Out in front of James Murphy. This is going to be a serious battle for James Murphy all night. Willie Allen is supporting. Goggin's going to go for a oh, score. Beauty. It's going to drop short. Got. It is going to drop short. Good play by Natalia Donsell at the back. And he gets on to his own clearance himself, does Donsell. Under pressure from Colin Colum Harty. Harty gets there. Will he find Goggin? Will he shoot? He goes for the goal! That's off the butt of the post. What a rocket of an effort by Colum Harty. Can Crooks clear? They're under pressure at the back. Goggin is trying to get there. What a rocket by Colum Harty, Mort. Off the butt of the... Could we have a match abandoned because of rain in July? It's possible. It's monsoon. Monsoon-like conditions now. Brandon Barrett in towards Goggin. Goggin can't control it there. But does he get it back? He's got a bit of support from Colum Harty. I don't think Dan Goggin needs support. No, he oh. doesn't. Reardon. Evan Murphy's in control now of the situation. Out to Keith Carmody. Carmody, trademark red helmet. Carmody will go for a score. This is a long way out. This is a great effort by Carmody. This is a wonderful score by Keith Carmody. Great and along. In towards Goggin again. This is Goggin out in front. But again, not easy to get it into his grasp. Needs Harty with him. Now Goggin, here he goes again. He's Harty inside. He finds him. Chance of a goal. Harty will bury it to Carmody. Must be a goal. Is a goal. Keith Carmody. Unselfish work. First by Dan Goggin. Secondly, by Hawks 1 2. Preliminary hurling. Quarter final championship action from Austin Stack Park. Here go Causeway again. This is Goggin again. No, it isn't Goggin. This is, it's a Hattie. chance, and a goal! It's Colm Harty! Back of the net by Harty. Goggin was the decoy inside. Harty took on all the work himself. A fantastic... Head Mikey Boyle. Last Friday night, we were here in Austin Sack Park, myself and Mort, for Bally Duff against Crotta. In that game, two goals in the space of three first half minutes. Turned the tide in favour of Bally Duff as Joseph Diggins goes for a score. And jo- Goggin, he's an absolute live wire. It doesn't matter the conditions. What, a, what pass. a beautiful pass. Here goes Harty again. Will he be unselfish again? Yes, he is. It's going to be a goal. Oh, what a save by dear McQuirk. Unbelievable. Brandon Barrett was nearly thinking of his celebration there before he put it into the net. McGrath's on hand for the rebound to put it on. But no, uh, they're playing well now and you can see clearly they've played at a higher yeah, standard than Yeah, here's Barrett again. Lovely pop pass by Adam White. Barrett will go for the score here. I think he'll get this one, Brandon Barrett, from all of 40 metres over the bar. Great work, it has to be said, Mark, by the wing back there. He probably one of the unsung heroes of this uh, cause with him. That's Adam White. Yeah, Adam is a good player. Uh, the ref is run the halftime whistle. Yeah, Adam is a very good player. Great pass to Lenhan. Lenhan, long towards half forward. Oh, that's well taken out of the sky. That's brilliant play by the wing forward. That's Willie Allen. He was sweeper in the first half. He's got. But they'll certainly wake them up. There's a kind of a rock or a mini rock uh, over there. And Crooks yeah, and come, out come out with it. And give it to Mark Heffernan. And Heffernan will probably score here. He's 50 metres out, Mark Heffernan is. He's not going to make a mistake there. Chased by three uh, fellas. There was three rabbits chasing a hare. And it ended up with the ball uh, going wide. But Crooks have intent. Here's Carmody. Yeah, Carmody, ref plays advantage. It's going to be a free if he doesn't score. Carmody says, I'm going to score anyway. Not a bother from 40 metres out. Keith Carmody. Kevin Landers has gone back into the back stair. He seems to be the closest player to Brandon Barrett at this moment in time anyway. Barrett will turn inside on towards his left side. Is he comfortable on the left? He'll get it back onto the right, I think. And he'll go for goal. And he just blazes it up. I think that's his six point uh, from a free. He missed one or two as well. Uh, but it just shows how valuable he is. Now Brandon Barrett's still on the field here as this ball goes in and he takes it. Can Barrett score? Ah, he does. 
I think the right hand might have the bit of an injury, but the left hand went up, took it down, buried it in the back of the net. That That's made no difference back. to the goal because he no. caught it with his good hand. And he's looking for another one. Here's Joe Diggins. Joe Diggins will go for his own score, will he? No, it goes in shot. Goggin is sweeping inside. It's touched in. I think it's touched in by a defender. Did it go all the way in off Kevin Landers? I think Goggin was where even the, the goals that Causeway have scored didn't bring such a uh, rapport, uh, such a roar from the Causeway support over there in the stand. That's gone wide. That's And the referee blows the final whistle as Causeway uh, record their 14th wide. The final score here is 417 for Causeway to Dr. Crawford. So now welcome back. Now we've seen the highlights of Causeway and Dr. Croaks. And I'll ask John because John was commentating along with myself on that game. Uh, 417 to 112. Um, it was 2 8 to 1 2 at half time. And again, you know, the goals made the difference. Brandon Barrett was in fine form. So was Dan Goggin. But they got a fright earlier on. They were slow into their stride. Croke started well, didn't they, John? Yeah, it was a, very, it was a strange night, uh, Martin, Austin Zach Park. The weather like, wasn't really summery. There was some uh, unseasonal, torrential downpours at, the, uh, at, at, at different stages of the game. But Dr. Croke's got off to a brilliant start, to be fair. Um, Colm O'Queeve, the big full forward, with a goal in successive weeks. Um, uh, that put them ahead after only two minutes. Conor O'Hare quickly got a point added to that. And after seven minutes, they were four points up. And you were thinking, yeah, we're going to have a really, really um, good competitive fixture. But then, while they didn't score maybe until 10 or 11 minutes, Causeway, they quickly got a grip then in all the most important sectors of the pitch. Like, they took over in defence. Evan Murphy was fantastic, just marshalled the whole thing. Dr. Crooks couldn't win ball up front anymore. Um, Joseph Diggins, I thought, and Sean Sheehan were extremely workmanlike and energetic around the midfield. Like against uh, two serious operators in Conor O'Hare and Mark Heffernan, they were the fulcrum really on which the Causeway Challenge was built. And then up front, like as we've said before, even without Gavin Dooley, like you had Brandon Barrett, you had Dan Goggin, you had Cullum Harty, you had Paul the man McGrath. of the match, Keith Carmody, Paul McGrath, mm-hmm. a few scores. Like, Causeway have as good a forward line as any that's left in the championship and when they got a plentiful supply of ball they made hay and like the game was over at half time I suppose in the second half you'd have to give credit to Dr Crokes they kept plugging away there was no notion of throwing in the towel even though they knew their championship was coming to an end they did rely too much on Mark Heffern and Freeze, which is probably one of their biggest weaknesses over the course of the whole championship. They didn't score a massive amount from open play. Uh, Tom Doyle was kept quiet the last day, but I suppose that was more down to the the brilliant way that Evan Murphy marshalled um, the whole defence. Um, so yeah, Causeway are into the last eight, as expected, and they're going to be as dangerous as any team left in the competition. Yeah, be careful what you say because they're playing Kilmoyley and James is alongside <laughs> you there. Um, so yeah, Causeway, just to get my, my top and sort on it, Causeway uh, were the better side. You have got to take in the opposition they were playing though. Crokes tried hard, but they had only two subs. They had only 17 present. It was a bad night and um, they had all the answers. I think for Causeway, they'll be very happy that they've got... Um, They've converted uh, Carey, uh, their uh, midfielder, uh, co- uh, into a full back at this stage, and uh, that must be good for them. Evan is sliding into slipping into number six, which he can play. You've Tommy Casey in that half back line as well, and um, then up front, I mean, they're very, very dangerous, as said John. So overall, Cause will be happy if they can get Gavin Dooley back fit now and and playing. Uh, that'll release somebody to play at midfield, possibly. Although the two cousins, uh, Sean Sheehan and uh, and Joe Diggins, played very well there. So yeah, I suppose um, I think uh, Causeway expected to win it, and they did. And uh, we will talk about Crokes uh, in a short while. What's the future for them? What they should do? What we think they should do? And maybe what they're going to do. Um, so that really is a summary of the first game. Uh, the two lads then will talk, uh, Aidan and uh, James, about the second game, which was out in Abbey Dorney. A fine facility out there, and um, James did not get wet. Uh, he had an umbrella over his head. Um, so we will now look, look at the highlights of St. Brendan's, who were trying to win their first game, and they played the newbies, the intermediate champions, uh, Tully Parnells. We'll watch the highlights now. So 
done, but it's well batted down by Gary yes. O'Reardon and a slip there in the middle. Out comes uh, Shawnee Brosnan towards it. Shawnee has it. Fort Havid in, in the hand now. Shoveled out to Gary O'Reardon. O'Reardon oh, looks James inside. Oh, and good. it's in the hand here of Anon Ferris. Ferris one and one with the goalkeeper. Great oh, save by oh. Dickinson, but it's bundled into the back of the net by Graham Horn running in. Yeah, panels need changes inside straight away. You're not. But it's won by St. Brendan's and Dahi Griffin clears it up the line here. Danger again. Break is a plus one there, oh. but he just doesn't seem to be no, not where he up. needs to be. No, he's, he's out of position. As Art Fort have it again now in the forward line here. Gives it to Limo O'Connor who can shoot from the pocket. And Limo O'Connor has his first yeah. score from play. You know, Irnon Ferris has got on so much ball. And under a bit of pressure there. As... Uh, the long one here is going oh, to break into Shane's hands, hands here now. Off he goes, have looking inside, is going to have a pop Beautiful off the left score. here. Beautiful That's an yeah. excellent score. Beautiful score. From Shane Healy. Lovely hurl of the ball skills. Into the hands here now, it goes the way. Oh, well done, well done. done. done chance, chance here if they keep going. Strikes off his right, looking for Good a second score, score of the match, score. and he has it. Just a little bit. Hogan's way there, so it's three yeah, on three and three there now. As uh, this see one, what chance are you doing? Have it on the break here. Nice Sheen O'Brien. Nice pass. Over nice. the bar. Nice. So just the goal is the goal, yeah. Okay. Now Ty Brick is sitting in the box now, right? He's probably yeah. just, maybe does he need to sit even deeper? Yeah, I so think he does now. on the far side with Gary, Gary Reardon. Gary Reardon, he'll point, he'll point this. Gets through the tackle and has struck oh. it. So who has it? Done. Good pace. Busting through here. Has Great pace. Again. Chance, he's chance. Oh, oh, beautiful pass. Oh, 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 He's on this ball. And yeah, the ball is thrown in and we're back underway. And it's Gary O'Reardon. Reardon just spilt it on the ground again. Has it in the hands. Four panels men around him. But finds Darren Deneen and he finds John Egan. And oh, Egan long, is going to send no, it he's long. Gone in, he's gone in, he's gone in. Oh no. Dernan's in behind his man. And oh. it's into the back of the net. Dernan Ferris. Very good finish. The long ball good in from finish. John Egan. And just peeled off his man like Jeez. a good corner does. Around the back, he was like a ball over the top, really. Self looks in the Good middle pass. now, Gary Reardon, oh. Nice flick. It's flicked on, I think it was by a Parnell's man. It's still not no. out of danger for the men from Tralees. This is going to be dug out and given inside. Trouble again. Is it Lee Morgan side there who has the strike and score, has the score. score as well? Lee Morgan again. Lee Morgan isolated inside. No, and you're not Ferris is on his well. own. Ferris oh, in the middle. The They're guy. queuing up here in the middle for yeah, St. Brendan's. Ferris. Yeah. What well, great block. Great block, great block. block. inside. Shawnee well, Healy was going in there on the rebound. That was well Shari defended. Parnell's getting away with it just about. Tight brick. Loads of space and time. Goes long. Who's one and one inside there oh. was uh, Killian O'Reardon. He's still battling away there, so Flaherty putting him under pressure. Reardon can't seem to get into the hand, does have it this time. Gives it back to Sheehy. Sheehy, and a strike's going to come in the far side from O'Sheen O'Brien. And O'Sheen O'Brien is going to send it it's over back. They need it, they need it. We're going to get the white dam, so Halloran puts it on the hurley, flicks it on into the middle here, finds a man, finds Sheehy. Well done. And on a run, on a run. He's being chased by two, is going to go all the way. Lovely effort. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely points. Lovely points. Impressive now. He's been impressive this year. He deserved to score. He, he did. Rocks had all night. He says he's only just out of minor. He's a young lad, isn't he? Is he? He's only a young lad. Definitely on the younger side, yeah. Harry Reardon. Reardon looking cross field now. Oh, Nathan Driscoll nearly took it with him. Left side of score. Loops around here now. Beautiful Strikes touch. it off the left. Beautiful touch. Floats it straight between the posts. A great well worked score yeah. as well from the line ball and up the on the far side. Delaney looking long down the line. Shane O'Halloran's there, Aaron Ferris is there, it slips away. through, stays in play, Aaron Ferris has it, Ferris, good tracking back there on the far side Shames. from O'Connor, gives it to Shane O'Halloran, O'Halloran nice with the strike, good has ice. sent it good over the bar. Uh, solid strike, a beautiful strike by him, difficult game, you that one. Oh. Lee Moog, O'Connor with space, he has uh, he's loving this role. he's loving company, this role. and he's Look left at that great for them now, he's all the oh. time in the world, Fabulous score. and kicks Fabulous. it in the first 15-20 minutes. Oh, great ball on to Aaron Ferris. Ferris trying to get past Ty Brick. He's going to go sideways and he's going to strike off his left and send it over the bar. 1 2 for him. Serious threat tonight. Every time. Ball off the shoulder in the middle of the field is their only option to score. Tonight they can go so direct and getting the scores out of it. 
And oh, Gary O'Riordan has it again here now. O'Riordan well under Gary. pressure. Has support off the shoulder. Good oh, strike from the beautiful. middle there. Beautiful that strike. is going to go yeah, over the bar. Nate That's looking up inside. Lovely ball. Don't, in here. Don't has it in nice, the end here now. Nice. Has support. Men on the run. running off the shoulder. Goes himself, Cahill Dunn. Dunn goes for the strike. Oh, good save. Not enough to beat Dan Delaney. The old Warriors. No, the, the but old it's O'Connor's oh, ball is. Oh, it's a bit save. It's a bit save. Dives to keep it out. In on Ferris. Looks outside for nice. support. Seamus is another Chips score. Maybe. Is going to look to put He's another one over. over. He and two. he has done. He nice. sent it over. His turn. Three points off the bench. Hey, he is. And you know, I said they're nearly all exactly from the same spot. He's hanging on over there. Lee Morgan O'Connor, who's come way out from full forward. Lovely ball, Shawnee B. Half. Shawnee Brosnan didn't take it first time into the hand. Like has first it on the score. run. No. Looking to float yeah, it did, over did, as did, he did. does. Lovely score. Lovely score by Shawnee. Time to there catch him. Well done. Here is Niall Cassidy. Done Cassidy. well second half, hasn't he? Done yeah. well now. Tough assignment in the first. He's hooked on the far side. Limo O'Connor work. Limo O'Connor working chance hard. Here, Gives chance, it to chance. Eddie Sheehy. Goal chance. Inside. Yes, yes, yes. Tight break. If any man deserves to score a goal, it would oh, be Tight break. Finish, and he goes. Tight break. Buries it to the back of the net. Finish. The captain for Chile Parnells. And they deserved a goal. That was a good goal. goal. Good goal. Well worked. Well worked. Well worked. And a lot of key men involved in the move as well. Probably their best performers on the night, as you say. Tide Brick, Eddie Sheehy, our men on the far side, Nye Cassidy. He's the referee, calls for the ball. It's full time, it's in the yard for 221, Shali Parnells. So now back with us again. And uh, James, I suppose we'll start with you yourself and Aidan. We're out in Abbey Dorney again. Um, St. Brendan's, an expected win. Was it always looking that way? And how impressed were you to say St. Brendan's? It did. You know, it's, they, were, they looked better up front. That's one thing I see about them. They were always solid enough at the back, but up front I thought they lacked a lot. Mm. But the last day they seemed to find kind of a system when they on Ferris and Lee Moog and Graham Horne inside. You know, Ferris is a great tackle man. He won ball after ball after ball. And I think for the first nine or ten possessions, as I said, neighbor death, like we, he just kept room the defence. kept, And it, it seemed like after that, right, we're going for goals. We're going to finish this game. We're going to get out the gap early and go home. And they just tore straight at parallels. And they really tore into him. Parallels were in big trouble early on. I think they got a goal early on, a couple of points as well. But that was yeah, enough for yeah, even. Goal chances oh, parallels, massive goal chances. Massive goal chances. really turned in the first half. And they were very <clears> close to getting them. But like our first, like you were saying, that just where they were able to create that space was... Power. Was, yeah. And that was without uh, Aidan, without Finan Egan, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he was. was uh, suspended for that game. He's back, obviously, for the quarterfinals. So without him. So they have young players coming through, um, the likes of Liam Oog yeah. um, and these guys coming through. And I would agree with you. He was playing football on the Wednesday night, Aaron Ferris. And God, he was the best. I thought he was one of the best footballers on the pitch. A uh, great man to get possessions, and 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 he draws I think Nathan, straight yeah, lines. Nathan right? Driscoll is, is Nathan Driscoll is playing very well. Is so I suppose we'll be getting on the preview soon. But I'd say if you leave out the Causeway game where they were absolutely anomaly, hopeless, I, I hope yeah. it's an anomaly for them. Yeah. So the other games they were only just beaten by Cross, they're just beaten by Baldorf. a couple of points by Bellado. Very close. So like they are a team uh, that um, will go forward in the championship to the quarterfinals on Friday night. Club. They'll trouble his sleep. And uh, <laughs> they'll probably cause you some sleep this night. And, uh, yes, he, he didn't sleep since he's had a match. <laughs> no, that was a belt he got with the intermediate that made him not sleep. Um, now, let's talk about Parnells. Um, did they show any... Obviously, it's their first year in. They have minors coming through and they have a lot of players away uh, that aren't available and injured, like like Brian Lonigan is injured and, uh, you know, Dara Reen is away and there's other good players missing as well. So, um, did they show... Anything in the game? Yeah, they did. They, they, like we're saying, they two yeah. really good goal chances. Ty Brick um, was actually made the run up the field, didn't That's he? That's right, yeah. Almost got in for a pull on the ground. It just went wide and like that would have would have brought things the first closer. Half, yeah, yeah. brought things um, closer. They struggled at the start. I think Ty Brick's performance is actually very like Rob Downey's performance on Sunday. He kind of struggled to get to grips with the space free roll he had as well yeah the full uh, forward line for our fourth but then actually ended up having a great game and got a goal in the second half as well which he totally deserves you know Dude. the captain as well he's, he's the heartbeat of that team so he really deserved to get that goal there, what we kept getting frustrated with was whenever somebody started to do well they moved them. yeah 
So uh, you had um, Shane Healy causing a lot of damage at one yeah. stage on Ornier's Middle of the field. They were playing into the complex yeah. end, Ornier side, yeah. causing problems underneath the puck out, and then they moved him. And then someone had to start doing it. Then Eddie come out. Oh, she no Brian, of course. Eddie started getting joined oh, inside and they brought him bring out. Him out. And it was just very frustrating. If they just let guys settle for a couple of minutes here and there. Once, Bit of panic, maybe. Yeah, it's just, oh, he's doing well there, so we'll, we'll put him here instead because he'll do better there. But it, it, they just took the players out of the game when, when they started to do well. Yeah. So they kind of they, they shot themselves in the foot a small bit a few times. And um, I suppose the biggest story of the whole game is Dottie Griffin picking up a knock coming off before half time and not we don't really know as I was, I'm assuming our fort know at this stage what it was yeah. it was a collision the way he went off we didn't know whether it was yeah, a dead hamstring. leg or maybe a hamstring pull yeah so I think he's going uh, to be okay though so jury on afterwards when we were speaking to him uh, for, uh, interviewing him at the end of the match seemed fairly positive and upbeat anyway yeah. so we're thinking maybe it was just a collision and a dead leg yeah. mm-hmm. um, rather yeah, I was than talking to somebody anything. involved in the management team with uh, St Brennan's yesterday and they mentioned him, uh, mentioned him as a possible guy who might be earmarked to mark uh, Michael O'Leary so if they're thinking that way he must be fit he to play be, without yeah, yeah. knowing anything about his injury but yeah, as you say short, yeah, it was definitely a scare though but um, yeah. look for three Parnells though I think it's the likes of Eddie Sheehy and, and etc. Carl Dunn made a yeah. huge influence. He was as well. brilliant when he came in. Fair Massive play. loss for him for Parnells in the first couple of games. Was yeah, because last year's captain. A great ball winner yeah. as well. Yeah. Like, yeah, captain last year. Tiny um, lot of ball. Um, so there's a pile of positives. Like, and it's a team that's only going to keep getting better. There have plenty of guys coming through. I suppose they're on the opposite end of the scale to Crokes, really, yeah, when you yeah. think of it in terms of the production line they have coming yeah. from failure winning teams, stronger minor teams. Um, obviously they're going to have an issue with, with football etc that's, yeah, that's, that's uh, the problem. every club in our career is that issue at, at this, yeah, at this yeah. stage uh, but they're going to they're going to keep improving and like that they just need to stay patient there will be tough days in probably, probably the next tr- three or four years in the championship there'll be yeah. very tough days from but um, as tough as it was Friday I don't think it was it wasn't all doom and gloom no it wasn't you'll have to look at them and say look they were, with what they had I thought they were very effective but yeah. as Ian said like they seemed to lose shape very easily yeah. and lose structure and that's one thing you've got to keep in hurling you can see it yeah. if you lose your structure and lose your shape and a good team will pull you left and right you're going to be in big trouble yeah. and they look create openings in like it seems to be Lee Moog relished the space he got and here yeah. and on running off just taking maybe two or three defenders with him every time Lee Moog got in space then like and it seemed to be then you had Gary Reardon going from midfield and the lads like that mm. they look good I felt it was hopeful like we said maybe that was just a blip against Cause We'll see Fred Nash. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see yeah, Sarah Never like yeah. yeah. like, The likes of Seamus Heller, and he came off the bench like, for four yeah. points. From it's the like same spot. He was in the same side spot. Side <laughs> there, yeah, he just stood. Beautiful. Give it to me. Bang. Um, so Bang. Yeah. Four points. Remind you of yourself back in the day. I'd never scored four points in my whole career, I'd say. Yeah. You forget to tell us there were own points. John, Dr. Crokes, like the lads have discussed, panels there, and I left them as well. Crokes. That's a bit trickier, isn't it, really? Um, numbers, as I said, 17 uh, last Friday night. Um, Pat O'Connor's done a great job. And even before it started, he told me numbers were the problem for them, really. Numbers from within the, cl- the Crokes Club. And he would make the point to me that in North Kerry, when the lads kind of are young, you know, four or five, even maybe younger, it's a slitter and a hurley they're giving and they're building around the yard or whatever. Um, in, in, in Crokes and in Killarney it would either be a football or a basketball, you know, I would suggest. Um, and then they're in, in inducted into the hurling later in, 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 in their in their careers. They get to like it or school or something and, and they start playing. So, uh, you know, our, their parents have been involved before probably, but they don't have the flow of players coming through um, to, to feed a team that has to compete. Unlike Parnells, they have good minors, the under 16s, under 14s, failure teams, as Aidan was saying. So what do you think, Crokes? Do you think, uh, like, to be pity to see them go again down to intermediate, I think, I think they'd be better staying up. I know they're not actually, it's actually getting hammered either. They're just not winning games. But like St. Brendan's, who are an established club in the county, um, didn't win a game uh, last, uh, before last Friday night since the semi-final in 2021. So, they're not alone, and I don't know how many games have you done. They have won down the years, like, but you know. Yeah, I suppose it all depends. <laughs> it all depends. It all depends, Martin, on the turnover of players again for Crocs. Like, 
they basically told us before the start of the competition that they were down maybe 50% of last year's team. And if that was to carry forward into next year and they're to lose another five, six, seven, eight players, then they really are in trouble because they don't have the underage structure there from a hurling perspective to bring these players through. Um, they have only uh, had three seasons now at senior championship level. If they do decide to go back to intermediate, are they, number one, being realistic about where they should be, or are they pulling the plug too soon? It's a difficult question that only they can answer within the club and, uh, and what are their priorities and where they see this hurling team in the space of the next five years. I suppose from a broader perspective, um, if they did decide to go back to intermediate, like you still need to have a senior championship outlet for your Mark Heffernans and your Dermot Quirks and your Tom Doyles and your, you know, your Michael Lenahans and like someone like Conor O'Hare and stuff like that. I know we, we, we broached it a couple of times there maybe over the last few weeks if they did go. Would you would you need to get a South Kerry team yeah. up and running? I, that might be how no, difficult would that be? be impossible. This would be very <laughs> hypocritical for me to say, which I suppose isn't exactly a force. But if you have a like Silver Ratmore, Doctor Crokes, divisional divisional side, team, and let the two of them play intermediate for at least one year anyway to trial it. No, I don't know. Lots of North Kerry clubs. I wouldn't like to be on the other side of playing them intermediate either. But I think try everything to keep ten teams in senior. Yeah. And I yeah. I really would also try, I would nearly be begging Dr. Cox, just stay, stick with it one more year, see what happens. Yeah. Try to get maybe a few numbers in. Obviously, it's very hard to try not to lose anyone too, but yeah. um, maybe that's a possibility. As sort of an East Kerry, Ratmore and Crokes, I think, is where you look at there because Ratmore are the ones making the, the progress in terms yeah. of numbers. They've, they've good underage, numbers good underage. Yeah, underage. And, and they've good numbers with their adult team as well, like at the moment. So they're planning to be the championship this year. Um, maybe that's where you look at is you'll have your core Dr. Crokes team over the last couple of years and mix in like you, you know you get yeah. maybe the chance of Luke Crowley then playing senior hurling as well like exactly you know, so yeah I think he's made a good that, point there Mark just about like, just about they made a, a it was a big deal this year for the championship to go to 10 teams mm -hmm. do you know it was a big change for the Kerry senior hurling championship if you immediately after one season see that 10 reduced to 9 again it does take away from the competition yeah. straight away and it, it does mean that your attempts at developing the game in different parts of the county are failing. And you don't want to admit that after just one season yeah. of a 10-team championship. Absolutely. James, would you concur with that before we move yeah, on? Yeah, I'd like to see, do you know, you have to stick at it. You have to. Like at Crokes, I know in Ratmore as well, I see just involve a cool camp to just say, I can see it on their age. In their nines and tens, they're 20 and 30 players. That's nines and tens. But it's when they get to 13s and 15s, they lose players. Yeah. That's where the drop-off starts happening. And Crokes are very similar. They yeah, see so them at the if young you ages. you don't have the senior to, to aspire There's to no like, push yeah, like. There's they're not no, going to hold them. Like. Can't, no transition. There's not, nothing to yeah. aim for. And even they play 16 and minors. They should be a minor South Kerry team of Crokes, of Ratmore. Because there is lads around their 15s, maybe 15 years of age, both clubs. What's their target? Senior's too far away. Start with minor. Start yeah. in the minor age group, like you say. Get that... Ratmore, Crokes, minor team, get that going. Yeah. Troy and Kilgarvan, Troy and Kinmere. I remember we played them for years, yeah. going on 21, and under 21 championship as it was back then. They nearly beat centrally. A good Kilmire team, a very good Kilmire team. Yeah. And Kilmire and Kilgarvan nearly beat us. Yeah, if you could keep Kilmire and Kilgarvan on their own anyway. Uh, oh, they're seriously strong. Yeah. They would yeah. be seriously strong. Then, Can I mention like the war? Could you put them together? <laughs> they never would. <laughs> Don't ask our friend oh, Buffalo. No, anyway. <laughs> but they, they mainly do still play together underage, Kilmire Kilgarvan. They do, because most of their teams are joined. You'd see. Yeah, but at senior level. Senior level, but to be fair, they've been doing a great job at. Uh, staying under in their own. If we put a buffer between teams. them, do you think it works? <laughs> to be fair, we'd have no one to be the championship. Like <laughs> Throw in the crooks. Well two separate, uh, two separate sure, the more teams, teams so. that will disappear um, out of the intermediate championship, the better chance of you winning a medal. <laughs> 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 no, I think honestly, a division, and I, I am, I hate divisional teams when it comes to football and all that crack. But I think. But how long you make an exception? Crooks, Ratmore divisional team, and allow the two of them to play into be the championship or let's say vice versa with so Kerry and Kim Okay, Kim you heard it first folks the man from Emily Dorney wants a divisional side to take part <laughs> in the Hurling Championship and uh, beat the letter out of the North Kerry teams who then uh, bring it to the county board level Tell and about. get him out again <laughs> <and exclude him. laughs> Who's uh, idea was like that? Who talked about that? Program, <laughs> they'll say yeah there you go you're the weakest link <laughs> now we are going to move on very shortly to I'm just going to list out the games over to again the quarterfinals of the Senior Hurling Championship on Friday night at 7 o'clock in the Austin Stack Park we've Abbey Dorney versus St Brendan's 
Then on Saturday at 2 o'clock, again in the Austin Stack Park, we have Ballyduff versus Lixna. And on Sunday, the doubleheader, and they should draw a big crowd to Austin Stack Park, I'd imagine. And they'll be in good form if Kerry beat Armagh on Saturday evening. That'd be Ballyhigh first against Crot O'Neill's, the county champions. And probably the match of the day um, on Clubber and everywhere else will be the 330 clash of Kilmoyley and Causeway. Um, they will be our games and they will be all live on Clubber. So get your passes or weekend pass, your annual pass, whatever. Get going straight away because they will, that will be a game not to miss. Now, our first quarter final, as I said, on Friday night features our pits, uh, Abbey Dorney, uh, with their four championships. Last time they won was 1974, so this is the 50th anniversary of that. So that might in itself uh, motivate the side to great things. They're playing St. Brendan's, who have seven titles, and unbelievably, they haven't won a title since 2013. They've been involved in a couple of finals, all right, but they haven't got over the line. Now, just quickly looking at the form, I beat Dorney were in a group with Parnells and Lixna, and uh, they beat Parnells um, very well, 127 to 8 points. Um, and Lixna was a game of two halves. They won 514 to 118. In the first half, Michael O'Leary went uh, absolutely berserk, I suppose is the word. He scored 3 8 in total, and uh, Oshin Mansell got 1 2. But in the second half, Shane Conway made a, a welcome return after being out since the mid game in uh, the Alliance, Le Alliance League, which was back in February, I'd say. He scored 1 7 in that second half, and they outscored Abby Dorney. So Abby Dorney um, have uh, had a good run, and they're looking good. They're looking fresh, they're looking fit. Now, St. Brendan's come from the other side. We're wondering what St. Brendan's will show up. Obviously, they won last uh, Friday night, uh, beating Parnells in the primary quarterfinal, but that was the first game that they, they, they won. They were beaten by Belly Duff, 16 points to 115. That was tight all the way in their first outing. Then they were beaten by Croton Niels, another uh, pretty tight uh, game. Um, and uh, 19 points to 112. Shane Nolan went off in that game. I think he was sick, actually. They missed the last minute penalty as well. And, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. And St. Brendan's and Causeway, that was really the one that they don't want to be reminded of. They didn't perform 317 to not 15. That was an awful game. So that sets the scene. Abby Dorney against St. Brendan's on Friday night. And we'll start with you, John, as you are the most neutral man here. Um, uh, what do you think, um, looking at Abby Dorney, what you've seen, and you've seen St. Brendan's? Is the fact that St. Brendan's got the win now, is that going to be uh, a help to them? Could it propel them into uh, really cutting loose against Abby Dorney? Or do you think that Abby Dorney have a winning formula at the moment and a leading man in star, I suppose, uh, almost unstoppable, unmarkable in Michael O'Leary, and it's going to be very hard for St. Brendan's just to flick the switch. I think when news of the draw came through last Friday night, I would say both of these sides would have been content with the pairing that they received. For St. Brendan's, obviously they will be re-energised to a degree from getting a victory. Now, look, they would have expected to beat uh, Tralee Parnell's seven days a week if they played them, you know. So it's not a huge deal that they got over the line, but they did restore a bit of confidence. As we were saying last week, Fanon Egan was missing. Other fellas had to step up in the scoring stakes. Okay, granted the quality of the opposition, but they still put up 221, and it's taken the, the nasty smell of defeat away from the squad after three successive victories. So they're going in in a little bit better uh, form, a little bit better humour, a little bit better self-belief. And like... They won't be afraid of Abby Dorney because they will look at Abby Dorney who, while shooting the lights out in their first two games with a combined six goals and 41 points, St. Brendan's will look at Abby Dorney as a team that haven't proved that they can deliver on the big occasion. So that's, where, that's the angle St. Brendan's will be looking at it. I'd imagine their management will be saying to hit them hard, hit them heavy from the start, take them on, don't let Abby Dorney build up a lead, see what they're made of right down at, uh, into their hearts if this goes down to the wire over the last 20 minutes and Brendan's will feel if we're still in contention yeah maybe we can get the win here for Abby Dorney obviously they are in good form they, they've done all that's been asked of them 
especially they were always going to beat Parnells. They did it in an impressive way with 127. Then against Lixna in the first half, they really made people sit up and take notice. And again, like we will discuss him in more detail in a while, but Michael O'Leary is one of the players of the championship. He's one of the best players in Kerry hurling on his day at his best form and given a decent supply of ball. And it doesn't even have to be good quality ball. He's pretty much unmarkable. So obviously St. Brendan's their first and number one task is to stop him from being an influence on the game. Now, that's probably impossible, but they do have to reduce his influence to a much lower level than it was against Lixna. And James, talking about that, Michael O'Leary, you know, he's soaring into the air. Once he gets into his pawn turns, he's lethal. Having said that, I think St. Brendan's can be described as having one of the meanest defences. Dan Dazzler Deneen is a man that, you know, you might go for a pint with him, uh, but uh, you'd be careful about what you'd say if he had the second or third one. <laughs> um, you would have Dahi Griffin, if he's fit, who's been one of Kerry's best players this year. Eric Lean is the best man marker in the county, I reckon. John Egan sweeping. And John Egan sweeping. And young Gary Reardon has yeah. got pace. And Dan Delaney is no bad keeper. So let's pit uh, Michael O'Leary and let's broaden it a small bit. Throw Oshin Mansell if he's going to play wing forward. Throw David Egan in if he's going to be number 15. No, he may, he may be uh, yes. So Brendan what, O'Leary might Brendan get O'Leary, the start. You might get, you might get Mikey Clifford going up yeah. mm-hmm. on the 40 like he mm-hmm. did in the last game. So look at the whole picture as well as Michael O'Leary. Do you think that St. Brendan's team... Um, are going to be easy to get by? I don't think they are. That, that won't be hard. So if Samarinas are going to win the match, it's not going to be there. Samarinas is going to win the match first of the field. How can they actually bring the forward power? That's their problem. Yeah. I think that's their problem. Like I know we, we can say they got 15, 16 points. They give teams desperate starts. They yeah. are always going to be fighting an uphill battle constantly. And if you give Abidorni a start, they will keep plugging, they'll keep plugging, they'll keep heading up. But St. Brendan's have to start strong. I think in that area, as you said, you look at the St. Brendan's, that's probably their, their power base is their defence. They really are good back. They really are solid. Can they cope with a, a towering Mike Leary? Don't know. That depends on delivery outside. But Gary Reardon works so hard in midfield. I don't see any ball coming out of that area so fast. Yeah. It's a, he, he was superb the last night again. And but, uh, St. Brendan seem to crowd that area. So I think if they do struggle to get the ball to Mike Leary, could I be only panic a little bit? Say, come on, we've got to get you back out from the square, get out to centre forward, start winning ball out on there. Then that reduces the whole effect. Yeah. That could happen. We've seen it happen before. Like, you know, if Michael Lillian starts. It it's every the, time. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 Brendan that's the first thing do is if he doesn't him. start, Brendan, his brother, who was absent the last, uh, in their last game, he was away. Yeah, he's um, a huge fan. And player. I met him player. on Saturday night and. Uh, he looks as fit, lean, fit, lean and mean, and uh, he's a great ball winner. Great ball winner as well. Yeah. He can be. It's if they, as I said, no, it, that game's going to be. It's the middle sector who gets control there quickly and very quickly and gets into the game there, and yeah. then that causes a ripple effect all round. And you can see what yeah, the ripple and, effect is moving my clothes. And Edorney haven't even settled really on a on a on a fifteen. Like a, a lot of the time we go into town, we probably do have a set fifteen, but they've actually been. You know, I suppose especially with the two games that they were. They've tinkered around with the team a small bit, so hoping that you're hoping that Francie Halloran has that fifteen in his head that he like more or less he probably does already know who's going to start on Friday. Uh, he has his fifteen picked. As far as I know, there's no injury worries um, from the guys that have been featuring uh, from the start so far. So it'll be very interesting. Like you're on about Mikey Clifford moving up, I think, and I think they need him back there because first of all, I think he's a brilliant. Defender, so I'm a big yeah. believer in just playing guys in their best position yeah. first and foremost. So I, prefer, I hope to see him back in the half back line. I do. I think they need him back there anyway because there is a lot of threats there. Like James Halloran is a big threat as well. Should like be if on. You leave him, he should be on. You know, if, if you if you don't pay attention to him, like he will hurt yeah. you. So I don't think I'm, he's I'm that. I'm very nervous up. now after all this stuff. I don't think he. I don't think he's. You're talking yourself out of the wind. Break it down like it's yeah. still a strong art. Yeah. It is. As, it as, is. As poor of the, and disappointing as they've been this year, like they still have the bones of a very strong team. They have. And yeah. you know they can't be taken for granted. Absolutely. So like I've no involvement in the senior team this year. Saying this purely as an Abidorni fan, of course we're probably unhappy with the draw because it was either them or Kimoyle or Prada. So, you know, you're going to take the team that have only the one win against Parnells this year. So, um, of course, you're, you're going to be happier with that draw. 
but it's still going to be very tough. And like everyone else, like look, our record against everyone in town is bad. It is bad against yeah. our too. Like what about are slim pickings against our fort in town? What about those fade outs that sees you heading for the exits about ten minutes before the end of a game, <laughs> scratching your head and wondering what has happened to What's the lads again? Game? Yeah, what, like in the second half. Now they had the game. Yeah, uh, you know, one at half time Really, I couldn't have seen Lixan getting back the whole way. But they still. I think it, for, actually, for, funnily enough, positively, it was more systematic than mental against Lixna at the last day. It was, it was the fact that they, for some reason, didn't get to grips with uh, Conway coming in and all of a sudden there was space in front of him and they just didn't deal with that space. All they need to do is just drop someone in, surely, like, and yeah. that's our setup. So I, I don't think it was a mental thing the last day at all. I yeah. think they actually just made it System failure. To, yeah, I think they just struggled to get their shape sorted when Shane Conway came in and they didn't really deal with the situation too well. I think that was more systematic rather than mental. I is don't that, think that was a... Like, I don't think that was, like... And I think the, I think Mort, the, the phrase uh, everyone uses is a bottle job. I, don't I think, think that was I think one one bonus Abby Dorney might have actually taken from that second half against Lixna, even though they lost it comprehensively, was that when they did have to bring Michael O'Leary out around centre half forward out around midfield because he was getting no supply in the second half, they did have Oshin Mansell who went inside, and he was probably their best player in the second half. When the ball did come in, he made it stick, and he finished the game with a brilliant. Uh, individual goal he has the power he and the play. fielding oh, ability to, to yeah. win the ball he looks fitter now than he has done since his career minor days yeah, exactly. since yeah. he was like like remember this lad was this lad was touted up as the next Seamus Minan he was that good as a wing back for the Kerry Miners in that 2020-2021 uh, team. He looks as fit now. You saw him when he came on yeah. for the Brendans in the football final. He made an immediate difference around the he middle of the field. He was wearing a helmet or did he do his hair? <laughs> he, oh, he bleached his hair. Now, yeah. we have to give credit to the, to the hair. It is a sight to behold. You have to. It's, 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 it's I'm flowing locks. You use yeah. it. Flowing I, I'm locks. convinced he used the same barber as, I, as, as myself. <laughs> I don't insult him. <laughs> but, um, and and if, you, if you... If you add in the return of Brendan O'Leary uh, to that, and then you can say that if Michael has to come out the field at stages in the game, and you throw Brendan and Ushin in maybe themselves inside the full forward line, maybe that'll be just as dangerous for the opposition. Yeah, and you've been Lee to bring on. <laughs> like I've been saying since the start, like since the first week we've done the show, it's all about the guys like David, David Egan, Jack Sheehan picking up two, three points. And Brendan yeah. coming off the bench, making an impact. If he gets two or three points, if he gets a goal, great. It's well within him. The likes of Oshin getting scores. Look, we're obviously putting more and more pressure. The further you go, you're putting more and more pressure on Oshin to take up, you know, yeah. the, the scoring mantle. And obviously, then it's it's Michael. So that's the thing. If Michael is marked tight, if Michael only gets one three, it needs to come. The, the other, mm. you know, two and ten needs to come. I think the other side of it that we're kind of ignoring. You, I I asked uh, James about the. Uh, the defensive qualities of uh, St. Brendan's, but I think Abby Dorney, if you were to look, yeah, James right. E. O'Connor like is as good yeah. a defender as in, in the county, and he did play with the county, and then he opted yeah. out because he wanted to play football with Nagail. Then if you were Ronan O'Donovan, uh, Francie's son, um, if you are Ronan O'Donovan at, uh, at centre-back, you have Jed Mansell, who's a fine player, and like the guy that you were always telling me was one of the best fullbacks in Kerry, uh, Stephen Egan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you carried his hurlies in one final, I think, or one semi final or whatever. So uh, Stephen Egan is 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 yeah. is, is excellent. Is the, and Connor Bohan, he yeah, played with the coach, a good nice keeper. Addition, yeah, very yeah, nice addition. I know. Year. I don't know how he managed that one. Uh, <laughs> I must, I must, Same jersey. That's all. That's it's all. Is it? He got confused. That's got confused. Yeah, <laughs> ended up in the wrong dressing room. Um, but yeah, uh, the defence. Uh, make yeah, a case for the defence. James, James is the heartbeat. Like we're saying, like I don't know how James isn't on the Kerry panel. And uh, even when he was in the Kerry team, he didn't get played. No, he wasn't played enough at all. Yeah, he wasn't played enough in in that five six year period. Like to be left on, on the sideline for, for a lot of those games. He's a, an excellent defender. And if James E gets going and catches the first couple of balls that comes in there, Ronan, etc. Uh, Ronan's kind of he's raring to go because he's missed a lot of time out with a with a kind of annoying enough injury, it was a hand injury. Um, so he's raring to go as well. So it, yeah. it's, it, 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 there's an exciting defence back there as well. I'd be making the point that the the opposing December and forward line the Finan Egan to this world etc in fact Ali and the is good and strong they're all young lads and you're putting young lads up against Kieran Deneen yeah. who's not as old as you but he's old uh, James uh, James E. Rowan and Jed Mansell Mikey Stephen like you wonder about the pace guys, yeah. yes you wonder about the pace that's a question you kind of you do but 
do these guys have the confidence now after only one win? Like, but they should have. Like, as you said, James Halloran, I'd have him in. I'd have Ian Farris in. I'd have Lee Morgan, Fanon, and I'd say, pin your whole game on running at every morning. Like, like Hawk did, yeah. do it. Yeah. And if, you, if that fails, do it again. And if that fails, do it again. Because there is no plan B. You have not got heights. You've not got ball winners. So don't be dropping on top of, me, of James O'Connor and these guys because they're going to clean you out near. So you've got to go a different route. They are going to clean them out. They don't have ball winners. We saw it against Causeway. Yeah. Their puck out fell apart. Yeah. Short and long wasn't there. So they have to come up with an idea and get running in Abidorni or else they have no hope. The extra man will be huge because Abidorni have really struggled with, with kind of getting around the sweeper in, mm. inside in Chile over the last couple of years. So if Abidorni can get around that sweeper, obviously he's going to be standing in front of Michael. Let's face it. Like. It's Johnny Egan against so, sweeping yeah, up. Yeah. If, you, if, you, whoever, if it's Johnny, it could be Dahi Griffin as well. Like, yeah. you know, as, you know, I think so Dahi will do the sweeping role if he's fit. He did yeah. it so well for Kerry and Mike is so dangerous. I don't think John will take up that role this time. Yeah. Might be midfield like yeah. he was against. Could be, yeah. Else, could or be. maybe they just leave him as a, a, a loose match. Get him as loose as he wants, yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, John, one final word on this before we get the, the verdict. Uh, as we say, Brendan's, you know, there's a lot of young talent coming up. Maybe this is a year too early for them, but like when you reach a quarter final or semi final of a championship, you never think of next year, the year after. You think of the here and now and you want to win it. And you look at uh, Abby Dorney, I mean, they have been there, there about the last couple of years they were there and the Nazis as well but they haven't made the breakthrough but I think this time they have a blend of youth and experience and if Michael O'Leary maintains his fitness and his scoring rate, I mean he's the big man, he's the star he could really propel them all the way to a final. So uh, do you think that um, Abby Dorney, this is their year this is their quarter final um, and this is winnable? Oh, most certainly. Um, St. Brendan's, if you go back two years, two to three years ago when they were close to winning the county title, they were basically dependent on Finan Mackesy at one end of the field and Kean Hussey at the He'd other end of the field. He'd be handy to Mark Michael O'Leary, which, which, O'Leary wouldn't he, which, uh, Correct. Which nearly brought them uh, all the way to a county title two or three years ago. They're missing both of those players now, so they're learning to survive without two key players. And they have a lot of youth. As James says, they have to rely on pace. They have to go for it. I think this will be a lot closer, maybe, than some people might think. Because even though Brendan's mm. are going in as underdogs, they might relish now to be in that position. And they will give it everything. On the other side of the coin, Abby Dorney, uh, I'll just give a little plug there. I spent uh, some time yesterday with um, Dan Brassel and uh, Paddy Welsh, two members of the team that won the championship in 1974. Two uh, wonderful characters, it has to be said. Uh, I'd recommend spending time with them just to, just to come out of it in good form afterwards. But they have, a, they have an optimism around the current team. You know, they, they want the monkey off the back as, as, as fellas who are, are still being talked about for what they did 50 years ago. I think this is a real opportunity for Abby Dorney this year. They cannot take St. Brendan's for granted, for granted. That's the most important thing, and I don't think they will. Um, but from what we've seen up to now... I can see nothing else really, even though it will be closer than people think. Abby Dorney have to win this game, and they will. So you reckon John O'Dowd goes for Abby Dorney, so that probably means St. Brendan's will win. Uh, James, <laughs> uh, who are you going for? Oof. Be, I, be yeah, insightful to, now. Yeah, uh, I, don't, I don't think I, I can't be insightful with this one, because I've seen, I've seen a lot of St. Brendan's and very little of Abby Dorney. Yeah. So, but... Draw. <laughs> no, no, and that's that's the draw man there. That's yeah. the draw man. Remember go, now, if it does go uh, to if they're level at the normal time, it goes to extra time, yes. and then it goes to the famous or penalty shootout. Shoot I mean, definitely, you'll the game. <laughs> yes, we'll <laughs> no, I have to say, I'm torn as well, you know, because I I just didn't like St. Brendan's performance against Cosby. Yeah, didn't like that, and. The way they they could, there was, Christ, I was looking for leaders, I was looking for ball winners, I was looking for anything, and there yeah. was nothing. Yeah. There was yeah. absolutely zero. Like, yeah. Parnell's, I'll, I'll write off that. Yeah. But I, I still didn't look back and say, right, okay, bell of performance, quarter performance, good, good. But it's against Abidorian. I think yeah. that's going to be more of a, I won't call it a long ball game, be unfair to say that, yeah. but there's going to be a lot of ball in the air. 
Yeah. And I don't think they're ball winners. Yeah. So I'll call yeah. it a journey in that one. Yeah. Uh, Rumour has it that Aidan had to grab you and restrain you from jumping the wire. You wanted to go in and give them some advice. <laughs> uh, St. Brendan's and how to play. But anyway, we'll leave that go. Kill Miley Man helping St. Brendan's. <laughs> no wonders will cease. Now, I suppose it's unfair to ask you. You obviously want Abby Dorney to win. There's, but There's uh, a lot of pressure. Like, and yeah. you know, now, we, you know, we're doing this day early as well. And I'm even more nervous now than... <laughs> We're well, at the was going convincing to be, so. you. Well, when you play um, tomorrow night in that intermediate game, yeah. I'm sure uh, the nerves will go. There's a lot of pressure on Abby Dorney. And I said at the start of the year, if they just get to the semi-final, I'd be happy with that. I'd take that because we've yeah. lost so many quarter-finals now. Um, yeah, be a step further up yeah, the ladder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just, just get the quarter-final win. Yeah, I'm even more nervous now. <laughs> I thought it was going to be In so, the story. Um, He's in no more. That's all I can say. Yeah. Look, I, I do think if, if Abby Dorney, if the two teams play to their best on the day, Abby Dorney win it. Yeah. So it's just a case of can Abby Dorney play to her best. Too. So if Abby Dorney win, you'll talk to us after, won't you? <laughs> if Abby Dorney lose, you're at home. Yeah. So you're I'll not available. <laughs> Phone is off. You'll be gone out. Yeah. Okay. Right. So that's uh, the verdict is uh, an Abby Dorney victory. I would probably go side with Abby Dorney as well. Um, I know Francie in the post office, so I have to be nice to him. But uh, no, I think, uh, yeah, I think Abby Dorney might just, but I'm cautious in terms of the fact that St. Brendan's really haven't got loose yet. Is there one good performance in them? Maybe Friday night would be the one. But uh, to both teams, we wish them the best of luck. And we hope we're going to have a very good game. That's the first one on uh, Friday night between Abby Dorney and St. Brendan's. Now on to our Saturday afternoon game. Strange we have a game the same day as Kerry are in Croke Park, uh, but then football and hurling uh, live separate lives in Kerry. Um, they're not divorced, but they live in a park. Um, <laughs> and the game is between Ballyduff and Licks. Now it's two o'clock, so you can come to the game, then go home and uh, watch the big match on the box um, or if you're on the way up in the car you can stick us on the watch on yeah you can watch it <laughs> or if you're in Dublin you yeah. can uh, just take out the laptop or your phone or whatever and uh, click in and you'll see Ballyduff and Lixna Ballyduff the 2017 champions that just won behind Kilmoyle 25 this could be the year to soften uh, James's cough and uh, Lixna have nine titles they've been a lot of finals which they've lost by the way I think they're one of the teams who've lost most finals. But, 16, uh, I think. Yeah, 16, something like that. Yeah, massive which number. is incredible. Um, and they lost the, the runners-up last year, obviously. Crotta beat them, their neighbours. 2018 is the last time they, they won a, a final. And um, Lixna, they beat Parnell 16-14. That was just two points, so they just got over the line there against the Intermediate Champions. First outing, and they were missing, obviously, a few. Uh, and they lost to Abby Dorney. We've already uh, discussed uh, that. But they do have, uh, to the best of our knowledge, Shane Conway will be back. He came on the second half of the Abby Dorney clash. And, of course, uh, Conor O'Keefe, who's a huge man. And I reckon if he was on against Abby Dorney, he would have been taking uh, Michael O'Leary rather than George Stackpole, which just didn't work out. And, indeed, when Dara Shannon went in on Michael O'Leary, I think he did a better job. We'd all agree than uh, poor old George Stackpole on the day. Mike was just uh, in, a, in, in a, a different stratosphere on that particular day. Belly Duff. Belly Duff started the year... As always, with unveiled book, uh, the poor mouth, they were going to go nowhere. Uh, their too team was too players. young and too many old players, yeah. who were too <laughs> old, and you hear it right every off. time. They beat Brendan's uh, 115 to 16 points. Then they beat Causeway in a classic 217 to 117. And uh, Jack Goulding was the star there, 17 he scored. He brought him over the line. No Podge Boyle, of course, um, no Mikey Boyle. Um, Jack Sullivan then they went and played silly buggers bought themselves in Crata in the third round uh, bellied up one three fourteen 3 14 to 14 they were basically I think 4 or 5 regulars on both sides and uh, they played a lot of young players and, and Jack Inright and these guys showed up pretty well uh, Dara Goulding uh, Rochford was excellent as well Luke um, he could start I'd say and uh, the news from the camp from what I can gather is that um I know for a fact it's been news in North Kerry, so it's not uh, it's not a state secret we're giving away. Uh, Jack Goulding is away. They've known this from well before they reached the quarterfinal. He won't be there. He's a huge loss. On the positive side, uh, Podge, Podrick Boyle, is definitely back. 
Now, Mikey, Mikey's a guy that um, you never know with Mikey. Uh, he is injured. He had a bit of a setback. He was expected to be back for the quarterfinals. I think it's about 50-50. But as John says, by the time it reaches a Saturday afternoon, it'll be 80-20. Mikey won't want to miss this one. He's an inspirational reader. Kevin Goulding has been playing very well back there. Um, so that's kind of the update on injuries on the both sides. Ballied off, missing Jack Goulding. And Podge definitely back, you know, 50-50, we'll say. Mikey, uh, next now, Shane Kong, I'm sure, is going to be back. And Conor O'Keefe, this was the aim when we spoke to him before. Um, John, I think you spoke to him, and he was all to be back for the quarters. So that's the scene set. So we'll, we'll pop through this, and this time I'll start with John. Uh, you've seen a lot of Barry Duff and Lixna. So what are your initial thoughts on it? I suppose if you were to go solely on the farm so far in this championship, you think there's only one winner. You would say Barry Duff, three games, three wins. Lixna, two games, barely beating Parnells, then conceding 5-40 in against Abbey Dorney. You'd say it has to be a Bally Duff victory. Then you look at last year and you say to yourself, maybe when Bally Duff played Lixna twice in last year's championship, you might have thought Bally Duff were going to win them games as well. And Lixna emerged victorious on both occasions. Very convincingly, if I can remember back to the semi-final, they were much the better team. Now, Lixna will have gained confidence almost solely from the return of Shane Conway. Because as we saw that night against Abby Dorney, his return not alone galvanised his teammates, but it galvanised the whole Lixna support base. It was, they were just a different kettle of fish in the second half. Other players who had been doing nothing in the first half suddenly remembered that they you were... You're talking de- about Reggie Gallivan? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that about Reggie. <laughs> no, you better not. Because if you meet him in a dark night down an alleyway, you're in trouble. Um... But they, they suddenly realised that they were good hurlers as well and that, that they shouldn't be getting hammered out the gate uh, by Abby Dorney. And it was a totally different Knicks now. They would have finished that game uh, in a more buoyant mood, which is strange to say after conceding 5-14. And Conwell will be back. Conor O'Keefe will be back. We're not sure what the story is with Jeremy McKenna. Um, I presume they will have positional changes yeah, from what went on in the, in, in the first half against Abby Dorney. They will change their team around. Um... They'll go back, obviously, to what they, they remember from last year as well against Bally Duff. And then you've the loss of Jack Goulding, which uh, is huge for the Duffers because he's been probably their inspiration so far in the absence of Podge and Mikey. Now, their possible or probable returns should make up for Jack's absence this weekend to some degree. And I suppose at this early stage, looking at it and looking at what some of their young players produced yeah. against Crotta even the last day. Luke Rochford will certainly start, Mert. Uh, yeah. I don't think there's any question about that now. With the likes of Adam Seagal as well, with the likes of... This could be the day that maybe Joe Evan... Gorman back in goals as well. He's playing very well. He was outstanding Excellent. the last day. That's a big call. That is a big call that uh, Barry O'Grady has to make. Uh, young Quinlan is a fine young keeper, but PJ Gorman looked exceptional and brought a kind of a calmness to the defence yeah. against uh, out. Crotta find, yeah. the last day. I think... Saturday is a big day for Evan Boyle. Um, we know that the potential is there, the talent is there. I suppose it's like looking at some of those Cork players and you look at maybe an Alan Connolly or a Brian Hayes inside in the full forward line with the height, with a kind of a style. with a, Maybe with punch a, to guide yeah. him, punch next to him to guide with, him. With a gracefulness. Maybe guide him. And you mm. feel you feel that uh, Evan Boyle under the high ball the next day, which had obviously worked with Michael O'Leary. Now, we're not comparing them like for like because yeah. one is at one stage of his career and one is at a much different stage of his career. But this could be the day that Evan Boyle, as James says, with a bit of help from Podge and Mikey if he's there, finally shows... Not, maybe not finally because he's only a young fella in his first season of senior inter-county hurling it's just our senior club hurling we do know that it's there yeah. I would still give that nod to Bally Duff and there has to be a serious revenge factor having lost twice to Lixna last year that has to be tormenting them since last year yeah. and they are in a better place yeah absolutely uh, James tradition I mean Bally Duff like yourself I mean 25 championships stats don't lie they're always tough to beat, and everybody says it. If you meet the Duffers, like you lay on your victory, and that's been the way they've been down the years. And wherever in recent years, with the last 20 or 30 years, actually, there's always been a boil uh, from Liam <laughs> in goals uh, to then Co- Kenneth and yeah, Colum and Aidan yeah. and Liam, of course, the Jap, as we call him, uh, Evan's dad, uh, and now down to Mikey, Podge, and, Mikey and, and, and Killian, and uh, Mikey's yeah. son, and Evan. 
Yeah. I mean, there's boils everywhere. <laughs> I mean, a boil is a sore thing. You know, a, a boil <laughs> not hurler, not uh, not but in Ballyduff, no, they're absolutely yeah. top class individuals. Um, so, do you think that counts? Now, they will be hurting, as John said, from being beaten by Lixnab before, but they'll see this as an ideal chance. I mean, Lixnab have a number of players that haven't been playing recently with them. Uh, Mikey Keller, who's a fine forward, young forward, he's away. Uh, John Buckley's in Australia. Uh, they're missing a lot of players now. They're missing yeah. Owen Ross, obviously. <clears throat> and we don't know, as we said, and Jack Goulding's going to be missing the next day. But do you think that counts for Bally Duff? Tradition? It has to. It has to, really. But Lixner have a tradition of beating them recently. Yeah. Oh, that, that's another. Yeah. <laughs> it's really poor against Lixner. Lixner seem to have the upper hand of Bally Duff a lot, which I, and except Bar maybe. When Belioff got the train or all that time, they beat Belioff, or they beat Lixna a few yeah. times in the finals at that stage. Yeah. They really had the upper hand on them. But of late, Lixna seems to be thereabouts. But as you say, I don't think Lixna are not as strong as they were last year. Nowhere near us. Mm-hmm. Jack Gooling is the X Factor. It's gone now. That's yeah. a worry for me. That's what, And then playing Evan the full forward, I think it's too much hurling to be in there. I yeah. wouldn't see him as a ball winner full forward at all. Would I'd you move around the middle? Oh, ball player. Excellent yeah. hurling. He's brilliant hurling. I yeah. wouldn't have him in under high ball at all. Yeah. Not a hope. Leave that to Mikey and Podge and the lads. They're more experienced. Yeah. They can you could put ball. Mikey in the square. Yeah. He's still a good ball. Oh, if they play Mikey in the square, there's goals there. Yeah. There's goals there. Even with Conor O'Keefe, maybe, or whoever, if Conor's in there, or whatever, or maybe yeah. Josh Dakpo or Darius Shanahan. You have to put one of your best players back there in. No, that yeah. releases Podge. Who's Mac and Podge then? Right, that's yeah. releasing another fella. Who's Mac and Evan? Dylan Maria to you. You're yeah. stretching yeah. the yeah. league stand of a lot there with every player they have to mark. Yeah. You're stretching a lot. Dylan Maria is going to go back to the field. I see it a lot. Yeah. And Kevin Goulden is back there already. That's the one worry I have is do better off pull too many back, lose all shape. Because Lixna are going to, Lixna are notorious yeah. for it, pulling you in all directions. But Kevin notorious. Goulding is playing back there. He's going to be back there. He's going to be a sweeper. He's going to be getting, maybe getting two or three points from, from the sweeper position. Excellent. I do see Bell off winning. I do. Yeah. Not a, not a huge, huge margin though. It's going yeah. to be tighter than we think, but Lixna are not as strong as they were last year. That's why I would give the nod to Bellyduff. Yeah. Because even, as you said, beaten twice last year by Lixna. When I thought in the semi final, Bell off were in better shape. Than Lixna, yeah. but Lixna still pulled it out. Yeah. They played to their strengths. Lixna do that unbelievably. If their main strength is Shane Conway, they'll play that all night long and they will give you some game in that way. Yeah. They'll play to their ultimate. With the, what, what little they have, they'll play to that. I'll tell you one thing, James. Um, I know you probably never thought of it, but the, the viewers will, will realise it. You make a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know Jeez, I'm doubting myself I'm going to put you, I'm going to put you forward for the Kerry Seal oh, management don't. job along with they everybody they me out after a week have they gone after a week no 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 I, there'd be a bit of madness and insanity there that could get us over the line um, it, uh, sorry Aidan um, I was thinking Mikey Boyle you know he really is he was the same with Kerry he's kind of the inspirational the spiritual leader and I noticed he was doing the kind of water by looking after the defence when he was injured with the last couple of games and I could see him going in at times of water and talking to lads and encouraging them and uh, and that sort of thing even from the line he was having an influence in my opinion yeah. I think he's very important to them if they're to win the championship they'll need Mikey on the field somewhere because he's a leader an organiser Sometimes he gives yeah. out, we know that. Uh, but at the same time, he leads that team. They need a leader. Yeah, but by all accounts, Kevin Goulding's supposed to have really stepped up in that regard uh, in, the, in the backs. And uh, he's a very good communicator back there as well. Yeah. Uh, Mikey, I think the beauty of Mikey is you can put him in full forward for 20 minutes. He can score a goal. Then if you need to put him back, centre back, you put him back, centre back, he'll, call, he'll, he'll make an influence there if, if yeah. you're in trouble. Like that's the kind of the, the best part of Mikey, um, like that. Even if he's not fit to start and comes on as a sub, like that proper you know lift, uh, super sub lift. effect from yeah. from him as well. Like, um, they think like we were saying though, like Jack Goulden, that's the fulcrum of the team. The X Factor's gone. gone. So they right. they've been so good this year. They've been so good to watch, all because of Jack Goulden. Yeah, take that out now. So that's gone. Are you suggesting that Pod Pyle is not as good a player as Jack Goulding? Different totally. Are you different player totally. Of him, in fairness. Are, are, um, are you suggesting what? that Pod Pyle is not a good player? <laughs> different player totally. Pod is not a centre forward, but Jack Podge was. Is, like, I think the way that Pod and Jack would have been able to bounce off each other oh, as yeah. well. Like, that'd be, oh, like, that's Jack a, that's a hard forward so like to mark. Like, he's been yeah. the link up between yeah. Yeah. Kevin at the back and the full forward. From one of the games, remember, he gave a pass for a goal. To Rochi. He's his own assist of the year competition going on. It's ridiculous. 
yeah. some of the, 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 the sissies later on, like the first game. The but these two like, or three brothers, uh, and um, David and Dara, they're on to... Dara's there, yeah, so yeah. Dara played last day. So, yeah, um, and David came on and got a goal. Yeah, yeah so, like, there's... That's just a, it's a huge loss. I when the draw was made first, I was thinking that's better enough we're gonna win that. The old ex nab eight and I think they'll win it fairly handily. Now I'm thinking the more I reflect on it, they do have a serious problem with Lixna, whatever it is. They, it's their yeah. bogey team the last couple of years inside and Chile. So you take Jack Gould in a way, this is going to be a you, lot, lot closer than the one we initially first thought. Do you think that Shane Conway I know he came on the last day, but it was like in a beaten cause and there wasn't pressure on him, but he did score one seven. But he has no hurling played, and he has, and he's had yeah. an no injury. fear of him. No they, fear. Is there any? Is there any fear of him? They need no. him inside, surely. Now they, I think they just give him a I free think, role and they just let him do what he wants. I let him play, play to him. Yeah. Give him ball, give him ball, give him ball. Wherever he is, I if he's if in your they, half back, give to him. If they were to learn anything, though, surely you can say learn is just leave him inside. Yeah, if they can no, afford, if they can afford, don't, don't have him out from the middle no, of the field. I don't think so. I, I think leave him in like as long as you can. If, look, if, if they can get balling, yeah, yeah, enough, yeah. Bring yeah. Back, Would you have liked to mark James? You were a oh, not a hope, no way. No, he's too, he'd be everywhere, and he's he's too much skill. He really is good. His striking is so good. He can go left or right, and like yeah. that's then you're. I mean, uh, then you're in trouble. A Fitzgibbon Cup winner, playing yeah, with super. all the top. Every club in yeah. Cork would have had him. Every club in yeah. Cork would take him to our one. You can mildly take him, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we take anyone. <laughs> we're we're okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Obviously, we're born there. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't have played with them. Uh, right. Uh, so, are we saying uh, Betty Tough are going to win this game, or are we kind of a bit dubious now that we found oh, out that Jack Golding is that playing? Yeah, that's it really changes. I think that's a huge. That's a change. Right? It yeah, really changes. Change I do think they you might really just are. I mean, I got the on here to be decisive. <laughs> you know, incisive. <laughs> And have an opinion, and now I'm finding he's sitting on Waste the fence time. waiting. I mean, like I could have got three fellas down from in the in the gents morns gents at the gym uh, next door, <laughs> and, and 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 put she put them sitting there, and I'd have got the same satisfaction. So I'm looking for a verdict now. Uh, I know you think that it's got close or belly up mixed in college, and I think the, even uh, like I think Ty Brosnan will actually enjoy. Uh, that traditional matchup probably inside in full forward line as well as you're going to get with Belly Duff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although, look, they are well able to play more inside the hurling with the likes of Kevin and stuff. Um, I, it's going to be very close. I do think Belly Duff will just win it, but I won't be surprised one bit if they don't. James? I call Belly Duff as well. Absolutely. Just the simple fact that they, they Nick are not as strong. Yeah. They've lost a couple too many. John? Bally Duff will win and then they'll have Jack Goulding back for the semi-final and will we'll make them even harder to beat from there on in. So, obviously, your chat with the old guys from Abbey Dorney, did you know uh, good? You didn't <laughs> change your opinion. You were obviously a duffer. Uh, probably because young uh, uh, Carrig is involved with them, isn't it? Uh, Stefan. Stefan, yeah. Um, Stefan could be doubtful as well for... Uh, for the weekend, but we'll say no more. Um, so, yeah, I think Belly Duff as well, by the way. Um, I put the kiss of death on them. We've all kind of gone for Belly Duff here, but Belly Duff, just to edge it, but wouldn't surprise me. And Barry Hennessy's the latest that we've all gone for Belly Duff. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And Barry, we're by the way... We're exactly what I love you. The only thing I would say to Barry <laughs> Hennessy... <laughs> is, <laughs> yes. The only thing I would say to Barry Hennessy is, like, there's lots of uh, names in, and I know he's in for the Kerry Senior Hurling job. Uh, by the way, James McCarthy isn't. But uh, Barry Hennessy is in for the Kerry job. I think Matt Foley might be in. John Tweet Griffin. Stephen Goggin might be in there. Um, Our Pat friend Ian Bennett, Brick. Our friend Ian Brick said he'd be interested as well. And uh, there's a process being set up now. So we want to be Kerry Hurling manager. Uh, possibly what about the Aiden final. Lee? What about Aiden Leahy after that Abbey Dorney under 21 experience? Uh, no, he had very poor relations with the media. Uh, <laughs> so um, I think that um, that we will have a Kerry hurling manager for the county board meeting on the 28th of August. So we mightn't have one before the final, but there will be interviews. It all depends on what happens with uh, Kerry at the weekend if they win and go on for the Ireland. Obviously, the next two weeks will be tightened up by football duties, but other than that, there will be interviews taking place. So there's six or seven lads, I think, up for it, and the best to look to all of them. But uh, I wouldn't mind seeing Barry Hennessy now that I've uh, said that his team is not going to win on... Uh, on <laughs> you're saying he's at loose end, so after on, on, on Saturday, <laughs> I reckon that he might have time to go for that interview. And, uh, Only on that basis. <laughs> uh, no, no, he deserves it. And I would mind to see him, uh, the manager. Um, he is very, very good. And 
Can I dig myself out of this hole? Let's give no, me a no, too late. Uh, too late. So, yeah, well, best of luck to Barry and the two Barrys, Barry Hennessy and Barry O'Grady. With Ballyduff Duff and Nick Snyder, that's our Saturday game. And um, we seem to think that Bally Duff, on tradition, although we are fearful without Jack Goulding, that they will prevail on Saturday. And now on to Super Sunday, uh, to borrow a phrase from another sport. Because at Aston Stack Park on Sunday next at 1.30, we have the first of a cracking doubleheader. Crat O'Neill's last year's champions. They've only 10 uh, titles, by the way, uh, against Ballyhaig, who have less. They have five. And the last time they won it was uh, in the year 2000. And at that stage, James McCarthy was a veteran. Um, now, looking at it, Crat O'Neill's have been impressive, except the game that they used their second team. Uh, they beat Causeway, won 19 to 13 points. Shane Olin got uh, 14 points in that one. Um, Crat in the second game, Brendan's gave him a good game, uh, 19 points to 112. And then, of course, they got beaten by Belly Dove, 314 to 14 points. The eye catcher there, to my mind, was um, Gavin Parker. Came on. Our start to that game and scored a couple of nice points. Um, Ballyhaig, on the other hand, they shocked the hurling world in Kerry when they beat Kilmoyle in the opening game, 16 points to 13. Um, Philip Lewis had got 12 there, so he's the main scorer there, 12 out of 16. That's a fair haul. And uh, then against uh, Dr. Crokes, Eric Walsh had a, had a great game at uh, full forward, 1-4. From play and Philip Lucid hit 111. So Lucid is on fire there, Philemo Sullivan. And they've got some tasty backs as well. Graham Slattery is quite good. And of course, Colin Walsh is the sweeper supreme. So it's set up nicely. Bally Haig, um, you know, since they haven't got to the latter stages of championships for quite a while, while Crot O'Neill's um, have built up a nice team. And it looks like they have, um, they're going to have. Uh, Shawnee McGrath back, uh, John, and um, I'm not too sure have they any major injury worries. And of course, Rory Mann, he's doing a great job sweeping for them. I would say he's probably the best sweeper left in the competition. I know Colin Walsh has played well and there's a couple of more lads as well, but I think uh, Rory has it down to a fine art. Um, obviously, they're the champions. They look at this game. They won't underestimate um, the belly hide challenge. Uh, who are coming, uh, but they will fancy their chances, won't they? In one way, this is a very strange game to look ahead to because the reality is that the Ballyhigh Kilmoyle game seems a long, long time ago now. And Ballyhigh, they were out in two successive weeks, which means they haven't had a game in three weeks. And if you take into account the fact that Crotta in their last game played 11, we'll say, reserve team players or second choice players. You could also say that Crotta haven't had a real game in three weeks as well. So this is a match that is hard to predict, especially the first 20 minutes, because both teams are kind of going in new, shall we say, again, like as, as if they've had a big break and they're ready to take on the second part of the championship. So it's kind of unclear how this game will go. It might actually be a slow start before they rev it up towards half time and into the second half. For Ballyhaig, the Kilmoyle victory is everything. They carried it on the following week, as expected, against Dr. Crokes. But you'd have to say they've been very unlucky with the draw. Like, they topped the group and then they get the defending champions uh, and a team who a lot of people are tipping for back-to-back -back titles. Um, this is the acid test of Ballyhaig. They are making progress. They are better than they have been in recent years. They have players in, in good form in, in different positions or... You could say they were in good form three weeks ago. We don't exactly know what way they're going to enter the game. But Crotta, they got what they wanted out of the last game against Ballyduff. As you say, the Gavin Parkers, the Shawnee McGilligates, the Karma yeah. Whites, a few more players stood up and have potentially played their way into the starting team. If Shawnee McGrath is back, if Shane Nolan is ready to go at 100%, Rory Mahoney sweeping, Killian Trant inspiring, playing well, superbly so far in the championship. You probably can only see one winner, and that is Crotta. But the, the, just a long break, basically, for both teams, it adds an element of uncertainty to what's ahead. Yeah, James, Crotta, obviously, they had a long campaign last year because 
they won the county and then they went on to Munster and they won a game in Munster and then ran uh, Castle Lines. I think they reached all in the final. They were right, they were beaten by it. They were yeah, beaten by yeah. in the final. Uh, that's right. Um, and uh, ran them very close and it was the goalkeeper in that windy day out in Mount Cole who started, I think he scored 1-4. Um, and the only reason they were in the final next yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, Barry. Uh, so, you know, um, they were they, they were a very good side. They, they were, were a good team. They up. were a good team. So, you look at Barry Mann, he's gone. That's the big one. Big but you Bill look Keane at, gone as well. Bill Keane is gone. I think yeah. as well, that's another... They're yeah, not as strong he, as last year. They're not as yeah. strong. But they're at not. the same time, they've found Aidan B now, who's starting and playing very well. And of course, they're welcoming back the jazzy uh, wing yes. back in, in, in Sean McGrath. Huge, huge. Uh, Jasmine is going to kill me next time I see her. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Sean, he's huge along with Rory. Um, and Thomas O'Connor on the tap. He's had the as well. They've been excellent. And yeah. you have Shane Nolan up front, etc. Yeah. I mean, you have to look at this Crata team and say, they did what they had to do in the most difficult group and they're out now. They're able to rest players and give them a break. Beans, we forgot Beans, uh, Sean Weir. So, like, are we suggesting that Bally Haig kind of first year, now that they've really got going, and they are in an upward curve, and like Shami Forn, Derek Carney, mm-hmm. Eric Walsh, their be- best days are ahead of them. Are we suggesting that they, they can take out the county champions? At this stage, <clears throat> probably not. Probably not. And I, I know Crotter aren't as strong. Bell I don't think they've enough at the minute. I just don't see like they will have where, to really. Where do you think they are deficient? As we want to say that. Look at right it. I, I, I don't like the position of some of the players. I don't like Michael Lean as wing forward. I think he's one of the best sixes around. To rival Evan Murphy, I think he's that good. Steve at six, Mullen, at six, he's the best number fourteen in the. No, country. I think he's he's fooled himself. <laughs> that's right. That's it. Michael Lean is a brilliant in the back. I see him put forward uh, James McCaffrey for <laughs> the carry man. I think. Top, I think. I like. I've seen Michael Lean play against us. Come a few times at centre back, dominating figure. Yeah. And Evan Murphy type of figure. Yeah. Yes. You see the whole game when Evan plays for Causeway centre back. How team develops around him. He's yes. just controlling that thing. All of a sudden you're on the front foot. Yes. You're on the front foot straight away. Colin, yes, can do a sweep and roll. Who's your six then? Where's your six? Where's your yeah. six actually playing a proper six? As I call yeah. a six. Yeah. Where is it? Mike Lean is that man. Then you release Colin to do the damage on the middle of the field, and yeah. maybe do the damage inside where Quata have lost Bill Keane and Beans has had to fill in there. Excellent, you know, very well. Yeah. But Beans is getting on at full back. Beans, Are you Beans, Beans is Beans, getting old. <laughs> Beans is old. Let's get, let's not say he's getting old. Beans knows he's old. Beans played. So last Beans year. became a father. He's got a new lease of life, he it's, told me. He's been last year. He's been he's brilliant. Up all brilliant last year. Baby. Brilliant yeah. this year. Yeah. In fact, he has got a new lease of life. He had a role. Like, up like front, yes. I thought he was better he last year. Like the, the headache last year. He was. So, because what, they did, what they did with moved the Dominicans are yeah. first. Pushed him onto the sweeper, like, and causing, yeah. causing headaches. He's like, going to be like, like you, you, you Beans back full back. I, I don't like Beans at full back. I'd rather him where he was last year. He caused us massive problems up front last year in centre forward and wing forward. He was unbelievable. And Shane Conway and Jordan as well. Like They're going to be... I'd rather him up there, but I think... If Bally are going to get asked, Crotta, and have a real go at them, and have a chance of beating them if they are, they need to attack their full-back line. They really need to attack it in there. But then, the full-back line is so well guarded by Rory. How do you get at that? And the best player of the championship so far, Killian Trent, is everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Definitely. He's the best player of the championship so far, without doubt. Himself and Evan Murphy, I think, are the two best players in the championship so far. He's just so influential. He goes up and down the field, and he's given a virtual free role to Rory because he can play in half-back when the puck is there. Then if Crot have a puck out, he's gone to get under it. He's yeah. a, he plays nearly a two-way player. He's a defender and an attacker. Unbelievable. It might be Aiden. no yeah. bad thing, though, if Mike Lean is wing forward on. On oh, maybe. Yeah. But Killian would probably move up to 10 for puck outs, etc. He does. He does. So unique, he does. Yeah. Christ, I think you said, are you trying to kill Mike Lean? And there's not many athletes like Killian trying to run. Yeah. Mike Lean is, put him at six, and then he's under the ball. Yeah. No, Killian trying to be up and down the field. If I'm winning ball off you... Maybe. I, I, I just don't like the setup in that a little bit. I'd rather, but they have to have Derek Carney on Jordan Conway and they have to maybe Shamey Foran on Shay Nolan. Is he too young? Is he too green then? Don't know. Yeah. They have to put two men markers in there. Their best two markers have to be on those two lads yeah. and try and eliminate that problem straight away because if they're going to tap you, I have no chance. But what about Shay Nolan? Who's Shay Nolan? Who in the belly hike set up? Derek Carney is the full back. Shemi Foran is on one side. And Graham Slattery, who I've been very impressed with, yes. uh, Aiden, is on the other side. There's, there's, uh, no, there's no standout. Whereas you look at every other team, has yeah. that one, one marker. Yeah. Experienced uh, back to yeah. the likes of. Now, Colin Walsh Aaron will be. For, for, for yes. Yeah. Journey, uh, Floor for Kilmiley, you could say. Like, yeah. so, you have 
the guy, like I remember Abby Dorn used to put in, he had Shane Nolan. Like, it's like, had the, to. like there was experience. Man, Great operator, yeah. Great yeah. operator. Um, there's not that they're not there for Benny Hikes, so that's yeah. a big problem. That's a problem. The only thing is, yeah. like you look at it, you look at this Crossy team. You're fairly confident Benny Hikes are probably going to be in this game going into the last ten minutes because Crossy don't put teams to the sword. No, you know they they wasteful, they got through, wasteful. Like, they, they, got, they got to county final like eking out results like um, going down to the wire like extra time and, and penalties, penalties and stuff. Yeah. They and they only won the county the final by three so points, and yeah. they didn't really perform on the day. Yeah, a twenty point performance. It was a twenty point performance. Really, it was. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. it was. They're not going to put Belly Hyde to the sword just going by the way they've been over the last couple of years. So Belly Hyde need to find some flash of excellence from somewhere to win it, and that's probably where you're looking at the likes of Eric inside. Maybe Nathan um, Geary around him. Hope, Nathan, push yeah. Colin on too. But maybe Colin is going to get the most pressure. He's going to. It's going to be the most pressure he's ever been under in League yeah. when he's on that ball. Yeah. Well, like, he's going to be under savage pressure. Huge. And like huge. we were saying there, it was the was it the Kilmoyle, after the Kilmoyle game at the Crocs game, it's putting the pressure on outside and stopping the ball going into Eric. That's yeah. how you stop Benny Hague. And I think Crotter will be able to do that. But I think, uh, I'd put it to the three of you, I think if Belly Hague have any prayer of beating the county champions, uh, Colin Walsh has to sweep. If he's not sweeping with the defence that reads Jamie Forn, Derek Arney, um, Graeme Slattery, Jordan Goggin, Kieran Casey and David O'Sullivan, you might have Michael Lean back there yeah, in fairness. See, he's been, he, like he sweeped against, let's face it, a very depleted Kamali team yeah. and, and Dr. Croaks. Yeah. And when he got on the ball, he had no pressure on him. Low right. time. Too when much he time. gets on the ball right. on Sunday, he be swamped. He's, he's, going to get a, he's going to get three, four G- men around him. James, as the, the coach, he's the player, you're the coach, <laughs> um, I'm the director. Uh, do you think that Colin would be better implied, Colin Walsh, at midfield? No, I'd have Colin right in front of Rory. Right in front of Rory. Now, Rory, you have two choices. There's Colin Walsh, one of the most dangerous belly high hurlers on the ball. Oh, Christ, I got to mark him. Suddenly, I can't do my sweeping job. They have to imply Rory Mahoney all day long. You yeah. cannot let him down the field in any way. They have to do maybe like they cross it themselves against our first in on being good on the field. Yeah. Get two points yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah. They need to Is that because of the Rory. quality of his distribution? He's just too good. He's just too good. He's, uh, he's, his distribution is so perfect. If you don't, if you don't distribute... He's one of the best young horrors, you know, when I say yeah, young. Yeah, on, on the 20s, 20. top class for us. Can last year and this year, top class. Brilliant yeah. player. Brilliant player. You manage... Well, you coach him. As, and as a role, in that yeah. role, in that sweeping role. Right. In that sweeping role. Yeah. That's different when you have someone to mark. Yeah. Do, and that is... A different, like he can do that too, but they have to do that's different. going to cause him trouble. They have, have to have cause to him trouble. Difference. They do. If Kelly Hyde just come out and do what every other team does, they're going and to lose. Drop on top of Rory, they're going to lose. They're going to lose. They're going to lose. So they have to figure something out. Yeah. I'm sure Brendan will be having a chat he'll have with, a, he'll think with about a course. A former Kerry manager as well. I'm sure he'll be having a few coffees to see if he's any ideas and pick his brains. Like, and if he's dead right, of course, every manager should be doing that with anyone they can. Will, will the fact that Kelly Hyde probably have nothing to lose really in the broader sense of the term, but that yeah, they I'll, are coming? That they probably will get better in the next two, three, four years as well. Do you think they would be brave enough to do that and engage um, Rory Mahoney with Colin? Maybe, they could, maybe not even Colin, fail him. Put fail him in there. Fail him's a great striker. Yeah. If fail him gets on ball, He's like his dad, Brendan 30, was, 50 yards out, yeah. fail him would ping that ball over the bar. He will. If they could fail him, maybe even. Anyway, I think you have to imply Rory with someone, with, yeah. so, with a hurler. With a hurler, not a big man, a hurler. Yeah. And Gaynor is a worker, yeah. isn't he? It's yeah. alcoholic. Oh, he is. It is. It yeah. is. Free he is. It is. He is. Well, I would be suggesting that obviously my team, as I live near Crata, um, my team is Crata <laughs> O'Neill's. Uh, so I will be putting uh, Crata forward. My second team, by the way, is Abby Dorney. <laughs> But uh, you couldn't call <laughs> we're me. We're down the line. We're about seven. Wouldn't, say. <laughs> you wouldn't call me a glory hunter, would you, to move to that parish? Um, uh, because uh, one of them won a title for 50 years and the other won it last year for the first time for 55 years or whatever it was. So anyway, uh, I would think, uh, I would have to say at this stage of their development at Bally Haig won't be a match for Crotter on Sunday. So I'm giving my verdict to Crotter. John? Yeah, I'd agree with Crotter to, to get the win in the end. Um, but Bally Haig will give them a good battle first. James, quite a win, and if Benny High don't start to get into the game, they could be destroyed. They got to be very careful. They got to be so careful. Right, you say that with sincerity. Yeah, I, 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 they got to be so careful because you were looking for a house change to Benny High. <laughs> they got to be so careful. Uh, Aiden, Crotter, yeah, Crotter, Crotter on is the great enemy up the road, and he he sides with them. That's okay. With friends like that, who needs enemies? So now that's our uh, first game on Sunday. 
Crotter fancied by the panel to beat Barry Hyde after uh, a cracking contest. And um, let's wish both teams the best of luck. Now for the big match of the day. I was going to say the televised match of the day, but all of them are being streamed, all four games over the weekend. And you can get uh, your pass uh, for that game and indeed for the weekend's games if you, uh, if you log on to clubber.ie. And, uh, of course, you can also purchase tickets to attend the game. And uh, you'll find that on the Kerry GA website. They've got the uh, link there to buy your ticket. You must have a, 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 a ticket. But we're not supposed to say this. If you don't have a ticket, they'll also take cash. Go <laughs> park. Nobody is supposed to know that. But Nobody's watching. It's okay. Nobody's watching. I'm just okay. telling you a secret. But it's better to have uh, online and get your ticket because the place could be full. Um, and... Um, so the big game, of course, on Sunday is Kilmoyle, who last won the championship in 2021. How many years ago is that, James? Uh, they had 26. Three. They're on top of the list. And they're playing Causeway 9. And they were the 2022 champions. John Moyler versus Stephen Goggin. Two quiet and reserved individuals. Um, and uh, it should be a classic contest. Now, we know Kilmoyle... For a variety of reasons, they've had injuries. They also have had the sad passing of John Paul O'Mahony. Uh, they lost to Belly Hyde and they beat Crokes. Uh, and that's where um, James McCarthy decided to change sides and ended up doing previews on Radio Kerry, having <laughs> collaborated with <laughs> Ivan Hurley. Um, so in a standing in Killarney. In a standing <laughs> Killarney. We spotted, we didn't know what was we've going seen. on. Yeah, we've uh, seen. But uh, it's now uh, revealed to us, so I'd like to reveal <laughs> it to the general public. Um, oh, the loyalty of James McCarthy. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> Causeway, uh, Caus, Caus, Causeway lost to uh, Crasa. Uh, they also lost to Bellino. <laughs> And they beat St. Brendan's. But they had a lot of players out. They lost Gavin Dooley. Uh, they obviously are missing Jason Dickens, whose uh, grandfather, um, uh, he, uh, Paddy Walsh, that, um, that uh, John was talking about talking to yesterday. Uh, Abby Dorney, and he won four medals then with Causeway. And he's got, not a lot, he's got Joseph playing with Causeway, his grandson. And his midfield partner, Sean Sheen, which I didn't know, Nobody told me that he's also his grandson. So there are two cousins at midfield there for Causeway. But really, Causeway have been about Dan Goggin. Um, for a lot of you, Brandon Barrett has come back in. He's been outstanding. And the defence, Tommy Casey, Evan Murphy, they've been outstanding. I know the, uh, is it, uh, is it Jerry's first name? The Carey, what's his first name? Gary, Gary. Gary, Gary. 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 Uh, to the G, just close. Uh, Gary Carey, in to pull back, whether he'll be there now or not the next day. And Kilmiley, of course, They've been hit with injuries. We'll go to James about this first. Daniel Collins, I think, has a groin injury. Will Mossy O'Connor be fit? Will he be fit to start? Will he be sprung from the bench? Mm. The man in the know, but he can't tell any state <laughs> secrets. The one thing I do know is that James Godley uh, does, I think it's, it's his collarbone. AC, yeah, AC giant, whatever, yeah. giant, and uh, he's out, in fact. I'd say if they were to go all the way, he's out to the championship. Yeah, he year. could be probably, he's, he's too far. I don't, he, think don't think he'll be back. No, he, there's, there still could be, hopefully our, our journey continues. Yes. But as I say, this I don't think for Sunday. I don't think so. No. So what's the injury situation as you understand it? And as I said, uh, we don't need any, 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 it's out there, what's the story? Yeah. Do, you think, do you think Daniel will be okay? Daniel will play in some capacity. Maybe yeah. not 100%, but he'll definitely play. Mossy hasn't done anything for us. Yes. Yeah. So like, it could be, like, not saying anything, but his brother Paddy, right, in 2015, came back for a crucial ligament injury. And his first game was county final against over in Abidorne against Arfurt, and we won that match, and he was superb. Yeah. So, the Connors have no problem with the layoff injuries, so there's <laughs> yeah. no problem there. He and you win a lot in Abidorne, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> They're generous people over there. Yeah. <laughs> they don't mind, but I'd have no problem with Massey coming back in. The legs should hold up, hopefully, for him. He's been doing a few runs. It's just when you get that push on in the match and that bit of yeah. pressure comes on you. Yeah. Do. Gavin is supposed to be the exact same way. Yeah, I'd say two like of them. Gavin won't know really until he makes his first run to yeah, the ball. Yeah, until the first run. You know? Yeah. That's probably the same way for Massey. Yeah, yeah. Massey's the same, I'd say. And, no, they, and yeah. hopefully the two of them do take the pitch because we want to see all, all the best forwards yes, we can. Yes, fact. 
Right, having heard the tittle-tattle that goes on from the two boys, uh, we'll now go to the intelligent contribution from uh, John. Uh, John, this is a match you've been looking forward to for a long, long time. Um, and then you arrange. Sorry, the draw was made, and uh, you are now <laughs> you are now looking forward to this game big time. Why? Kilmoyle have been very flat. They haven't been playing well, um, and um, really Causeway, despite all their injuries, have been impressive and are not going away easily. Kilmoyle are probably at their most dangerous now. The fact that they haven't uh, been playing well. The fact that they've had the sad bereavement within the camp, which will only drive on the players and the management even further. This is the, these are the days that John Moyler lives for. He's not involved with Kilmoyle for your county leagues or your North Kerry League matches. He's involved for days like Sunday, and especially days against Causeway. Kilmoyle are a dangerous, dangerous animal. That's why nobody in the draw wanted them. People didn't care about their current form or their injuries or what's going on in their camp. They just look at Kilmoyle and they see 26-time uh, Kerry County Hurling champions and they, that just commands respect immediately. Causeway, I suppose, are maybe the one team that look at Kilmoyle and they'll always look at it as a 50-50 as, as a battle and a, and a game that it's easy for Causeway to get up for as well. Yes, the last two games, and I suppose Causeway didn't do too badly in their first two games that they actually lost, but their two games since then have added to their self-belief, their morale, everything going into it. Um, I think what might be the difference in the end, there was a mention there of Mossy O'Connor and there was a mention of Gavin Dooley, both being doubtful as to whether they'll start or to whether they'll be at 100%. I think Kilmoyle are more dependent on Mossy O'Connor than Causeway are on Gavin Dooley. Yeah. I think that could be the difference. If you, if you look at the forwards the last day, um, with the way Dan Goggin is playing... The way Colm Harty's Brandon playing. Barrett. Keith Carmody was outstanding. Brandon Barrett. Paul McGrath might chip in with a couple of scores. Actually, just um, on Paul McGrath. He's 29 years of age, Mort, not 35. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to keep telling everyone. I that. And I've been told to say that. All <laughs> well, right. <laughs> right. I was thinking of his older brother. <laughs> so quite. I think, I think, look at it now. Kilmoyle had some players who stepped up the last day against Dr. Hooks. Jordan Brick got four points from play. Rona Walsh has been playing very well, has been a good free taker. Daniel Collins will get scores. Pawdy will chip in with a couple of scores. Philip Mansell will chip in with some scores. But I do think if the battle is even enough around the middle of the field and it, it comes down to a battle between the two forward lines, I think Causeway will edge it. Yeah. James, uh, I went to college with John Myler. I know a kind of individual. He's driven and we've seen him up the years with Cork teams and Kerry club teams and he's a driven man and their form I mean they played the league final but he wasn't he just wanted to give players player mm. game time I think and they came back well in the second half he were only beaten by a point my worry and you can put me straight in this is the structure and you're a good man for talking about structure of a team the structure at the moment if you were asked to ask me to name the 15 that uh, and how they'd line out for Kilmiley I'd probably Toss get six or seven yeah. right. They haven't settled on a 15, and you'd like to see that going into quarterfinal. Yeah, while, on the other hand, Causeway have a fair ID now, oh, you're but their best 15, you could, you could name 13 or 14, yeah. I might say. Yeah, so what, what can Kilmoyle do? Can they just produce... Now, they've been playing a couple of challenge games. That's not a secret. Um, so, it was uh, last week. It was a secret last week. It's not a secret now. Uh, but yeah, so uh, they have a chance to get it together. And we could have a man who probably took part in the Spanish Inquisition, uh, maybe making a comeback after a good number of years, but we'll say nothing about that. Um, so uh, uh, could, we, could we see a, a different defensive formation and a, a different forward formation? Obviously, a different Kilmiley, hopefully. I, what, I'm, what I'm hoping for that is. Form is temporary and class is permanent. I'm hoping for that. Yeah. Because... You're talking about every door in day. <laughs> <laughs> how, how temporary is 20 or 30 years? 50 years is not temporary. <laughs> no, yeah. it, 26 just, titles is not temporary. Yeah. <laughs> we have... Uh, look at it, we've, we've not performed yet. Yeah. But when you play Causeway, and can, can Causeway play Kilmiley, 
That's a whole yeah. different kettle of fish. It's, it's a kind of like, fixture. What, is it kind of like Man City, Man United, it, Liverpool, Everton? It is. It uh, is. Probably like lacks a, it's the, the most local Celtic derby. Rangers. It, it lacks is. the religious thing there. It is. It's it one is. of the great rivalries. It is a great rivalry. Yeah. Absolutely. Brilliant. Don't they like go each other. other. Straight up they go at each, each other. other. They go at each other on the field. It really is. And you know, we bring the best out of each other. We really is there a border do. patrol there somewhere? <laughs> There's a bridge, some kind of a bridge. But <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to We don't go near the bridge. It's fine. It's fine. Is he close to the border? No miles away. I'm miles away. No, he's miles away. I'm miles away. Are you, near the, are you near the duck pond? Yes, very close. All oh, right, yeah. Because <laughs> there's a duck there that keeps calling your name. Go on. <laughs> Mac, Mac. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mac. But Mac. It's, I think it's, it's going to be a case of what do we come with? Because I, I, can, I know what cars we have. As I, as I said, I've nearly been a supporter of theirs, watching all their matches. I've been yeah. very, very impressed with them. Very From the very start, you've been yeah, you know, just, talking up cars. You can, you can lose a lot of players. Like we, if we lost Jason Diggins and Maris Delaney, lose our football, that'd be like us losing Collins and Party, And we say, Jesus Christ, how do we get back from that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they have, I've been really so impressed with how they've gathered and circled the wagons virtually. Yeah. And Stephen Goggin has been central to that as well. And his lads, all the lads around him, have been central to that. His backroom team as well. But we really have to come with a force and yeah. get something out of our year. We, Jesus Christ, we've been absolutely terrible. I we've know. been absolutely woeful. Is he Structure, structurally, everything about it. I'm sick to my teeth while looking at him at the minute. I, yeah. I want to see the real Kilmali. The Kilmali I know come out on Sunday yeah. and perform. And what they say, boo, I get off the pot. Come on, like, yeah. do it. Yeah. Really has to be. It really, is, it's the right matchup. Oh, it has to, to be. That surely, this like, is the yeah, one. It has yeah, to be. Yeah, so has to be. No excuses. No you excuses. Tom Monan, I mean, he's kind of the Mikey boy love of, of Kilmarley. I always look at him as an inspirational figure, whether he's at the back of where he is. He's always, you know, he, Kilmarley is, and he, 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 his blood isn't red, it's, it's Kilmarley, whatever colour he Green has. Green and yellow. Green and yellow, yeah. But well, he's stripey. not yellow and you have kind of that. Stripey. No, stripey. We've been called stripes. Just years. hang on a second. He'll meet me sometime and he'll be <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, see my blood. <laughs> yeah, and he, he'll, he'll show me what coloured blood it's so stripey. <laughs> I got into trouble with Tom once before and I don't want to be in trouble again. Um, but do you think that Tom, you know, his experience coming back, um, he's not 29, he's probably no, 30 he's over, odd. 30 he's 30 over 36. 36. 36, 36, 36, yeah. 36, yeah. So that's where I got mixed up with Paul McGrath <laughs> and, 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 uh, and, uh, and that's my excuse. I'm <laughs> yeah, okay, you but uh, I think he has a role to play. Do you? I, I think he has to have a role to play. Do you know, it's, yeah. he's like, like I say, no one, like, he has to be marked. You can't leave Tom wherever Tom goes. He goes in kind yeah. of forward. Jesus Christ, we better someone over there fast. They yeah. like you're talking. Who they have? Tommy Barrett might have to go over. Yeah, like you're Gary Gary. Gary, Gary that's, maybe too raw, a, too young. Gary's only new to the game. Up, yeah. New to the yeah. game. Like yeah. he's inside full forward. Hang on now. Hang on a minute. Gary's yeah. been well in these last two games, but this is a different animal altogether. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. like, do we target these things, Kilmally? Maybe we do. See, maybe Gary we don't. Phil, maybe yeah, that's it. Like you kind of teams. I think I think both teams. Maybe Kaza will do pick their matchups. Yeah. They'll pick their pick their poison, as they say, really. And you have to on Sunday. I think both teams have to do that. We have there's there's forwards on that Kaza team. We really have to. Yeah. Floor, you're Mac and Dan Goggin. That's it. Or maybe Floor, you're Mac and Brandon Barris. Our best man markers, Donald Kennedy. You're Mac and Brandon. Or you're Mac and Dan. That's it. Mm-hmm. There are that's you. You've no choice. You just have to. That's it. Don't be looking around for any other ways out of it. You're Mac and those boys for day. And, and that's who it. will Sean mark? Right, Aidan, 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 Causeway, uh, we spoke to James yeah. about Kilmiley and, and John has kind of set the scene. So to wind up this uh, this uh, game for us, Causeway, you, you'd have to be impressed with them. Yeah, I think uh, that's it. It's, it's They've earned everyone's respect with the way they've just dealt with all the blows they've taken yeah. in terms of injuries and everything. They've gone on, got on with it. They've had two defeats in what were very good performances and then they went out and blew our fort away, which was like reward, really, for the kind of yeah. the suffering they went through in those first couple of weeks. Yeah. But I think that's they've earned everyone's respect like for the way that they've just carried on and keep going. And the way they're playing, the way they battle and fight on the pitch like is really impressive. They're a, they're a really tough team to get, although like that, I know they didn't have a, a very difficult game against Crokes. It is their fifth week in a row out. Um, so that might start to, to draw on them as well, especially with the limited squad. Um, if they can get Gavin back like that huge asset if they can get 10 minutes out of him most likely it's the best thing to do kind of start the fella like that really mm, because yeah, you know at least and to feel too maybe you know? and to feel yeah, some time back well, so any, no, any boost at all yeah. but yeah it's the respect they've earned just the way they've kept on battling and um, 
it'll be a great band because they're kind of they're serious one game. all really aren't serious game. Yeah, it is. It's, it is. Jones, so. Yeah, serious yeah. game. So yeah. I, I would think, Aiden. You know, I mean, you're a man who has in the past. Uh, had a propensity to suggest draw. Yeah, we think, oh, I think it's a draw. <laughs> Mark all over. Penalty shoot. Oh, oh, shoot, shoot, oh, shoot, shoot um, oh. Who do you think is going to win it? Uh, JMD with a penalty. <laughs> 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 Listen. Oh God. Yeah, he could. He could. So cause. Say uh, one first. Yeah. Then scores the winner. Scores. Scores. Yeah. World Cup. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like the Euros. Like in, watching England no, the Euros. I think, I think honestly it will. It could very well. It could be. very well. It's that close. The time is definitely very likely. It's that close. And yeah. it could go to penalties. Yeah. It could go to penalties. Yeah. And I, I, and it's very hard to call, but. I don't see I, a blow in any direction. No, no. no I actually, and uh, who's going to get through? I'm going to say Causeway. <laughs> You're obviously going to say Kilmiley, you can't say it, has to be fair. Of course I am. I mean, you've Kilmiley blood running through you. Definitely. And you know, if, get your season back on track. Yeah. Get your ducks in a row. Get out there. Because we win perform, this. Perform. We, if we win this, I'm telling you, we'll be very, very close. Very hard to beat. Yeah, guaranteed. Yeah. The winner could come out of this. Yeah, in fact, really yeah. pumping. Pumping yeah. really could be. Yeah. Most dangerous team will come out of that game. No. The... The uh, the Cratabelli High one will produce the the, the winner. Um, now, who do you <laughs> who, who do you, who do you think is it's, going to win uh, it? It's basically the toss of a coin. Yeah, it is the match that will capture the imagination the most, and it is the match that is probably the hardest to call. But I I'll just go back to what I said earlier. Um, I don't know if Kilmoyley this year can just turn it on and off. Uh, that they haven't been producing, and that they suddenly will produce a monster performance. They will be better, more certainly, than they have been up to now. But I just think Causeway have that little edge up front uh, that can prove to be the difference with someone like uh, Keith Carmody uh, uh, possibly being the match winner. Yeah, well, my opinion on this is uh, that um, Stephen Goggin has said to me, do not, under any <laughs> circumstance, any circumstance, uh, tip us up because you're a Jonah. <laughs> You would stop the Orient Express, he told me. Uh, so I can't tip Causeway. So I've got to tip Kilmiley. And the double For a bonus, first. This is a first. For a first. This and, is a first. <laughs> yes. And uh, the bonus in that is, that is a chance for me to get back on Tom Monet's good books again. <laughs> I'll tell him tomorrow night. Tell him tomorrow night. Tell him I tipped him up. And I think, and actually, Tom Monet could be man of the match, maybe. Um, oh, uh, if if he does, that's another course. Is that McGrath, course? And if it's not books. Tom, it will be Paul you McGrath. Uh, I expect Paul McGrath to have a, a next game. Runs. And we could have Tom, um, Tom Monan marking Paul McGrath, the 35 year old marking the 29 year old. <laughs> but this time, Paul McGrath is 29 and Tom is 35. Uh, does that settle the argument, do you think? Close enough. Uh, you got I, out with somehow. I, 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 was, <laughs> I, I might have slid out of that somehow. <laughs> anyway, it's been a real enjoyable chat, lads, on the games, the four games. And honestly, I'm really looking forward to them because this is knockout. These games, there'll be four teams going home. There'll be only four left in the championship. We've Crokes and Parnells already out, but on, on Sunday evening, there'll be four more gone. Who's it going to be? We don't know. All we tell you and suggest to you is uh, that, number one, you attend the games if you can and enjoy them. Support your club, support your team. This is the heart and soul of North Kerry, in particular, with the teams that are left. Um, hurling is really passionate. They're neighbouring uh, clubs. Um, you know, they work together, they went to school together, but for that hour and a bit, <clears> when they're inside <throat> the white line, all bets are off and they usually club the hell out of each other. They don't really. Uh, there's some great horrors to look forward to. Michael O'Leary, Shane Conway, Dan Goggin, uh, you know, uh, Paddy O'Connor. You can go wherever you want. Um, and uh, Podge Boyle, they're everywhere. Every team has them. Shane Nolan, um, Jazzy McGrath, whatever. So look, uh, it's going to be a great weekend. Now, remember, you can buy your tickets for the game um, by uh, logging in to Kerry GAA, uh, attend the games. Uh, as I said, you can always pay a bit of cash if you have it in the back pocket. I said that low. And then, remember Clubber. If you're up the country at the Kerry game, you want to watch Bally Dove, just log in. If you want to watch Friday night and you can make it, you'll see Abby Dorney and there'll be... Jousting with Sam Brendan's. Aiden will be somewhere between Trilly and Abby Dorney, depending on how the second half is going. <laughs> and on Sunday, the big doubleheader. So, 
get your pass on Clubber. You get a weekend pass, I think. You can get a, a yearly pass. And there are games from North Tip, South Tip, all kinds of tip, um, Offaly, etc. And uh, there's loads on Clubber, and they will be for the rest of the year as well. So get involved, uh, get your subscription in, and uh, we hope that the games will live up to uh, the expectation that's about. So that's about it for uh, this week. I'd like to thank my panel, John, as always, for your insightful analysis. James, look, I'm not going to insult you now. I've gone on all day about it, so I want to be nice to you. You were very, very good until we came to kill Miley. Okay. And <laughs> I'll take uh, that. I'll take Aiden, that. you were excellent this evening um, <laughs> until you started talking about Abby Dorney, and then you lost the plot and got nervous. <laughs> but you have recovered well, I must admit, and I wish you and your Abby Dorney, because you were close to Abby Dorney, obviously involved in the club, and James, obviously, stalwart of Kill Miley. Uh, seven county championship medals, is it? Eight, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> And no intermediate, by the way. No. And neither will I never will. <laughs> and, and neither will, and neither will, neither, neither will Aiden the way he's going. John, the best of luck in your junior football. I think you missed tonight's game. Uh, uh, I'll get there at a very late hour, I'd You say. will. You'll be a sub, and that'll be fine. <laughs> that'll do me fine. <laughs> that'll be grand at your age. Yeah. Yeah. So. so, also thanks to uh, John Mitchells and Breed McElligot, their chairperson, who kindly gave us this facility here, this wonderful facility in John Mitchell's. If you've never here, come to see it. Uh, and there's a robot out there um, cutting the grass. And uh, there's a robot in Kilmiley coaching kids at the moment in the cool camp, so make sure you're there. <laughs> um, and also, of course, thanks to John C. or Shea, JC as you call him. Uh, he's been behind uh, the camera. And uh, when you see this product, it will be uh, John, that JC, that will have put it together. So thanks, JC, as always. So that's it from Mort. Uh, until we see you again next week, we'll be looking forward to the Gavi Super Value Senior Hurling Championship semi-finals. Good night. <laughs>